military custody. His brother had said Hassoun was a victim of anti-Muslim bias in the military, something the Marine Corps denied. Jackie Quinn, Washington. Shots were fired on legendary Bourbon Street in New Orleans yesterday, and two people were seriously injured. Ed Donahue reports on the street violence that shocked the Big Easy. The shots were fired early in the morning, but Bourbon Street was still crowded. New Orleans police are looking for two suspects. Nine people were shot as a result of two cowardly young men trying to hurt one another. Police Chief Ronald Surface has a message for the two suspects. I hope that they're listening. I hope that their friends are listening. I hope their mom and them are listening. We know a little more about them than they think we know. The chief says he's not sure if the shootings are gang-related. New Orleans Mayor Mitch Landrieu is pledging a swift response from law enforcement. I'm Ed Donahue. New York State has announced an ambitious plan to lower the rate of HIV and AIDS by the year 2020. Correspondent Julie Walker reports on Governor Cuomo's latest initiative. Governor Andrew Cuomo says the state is aiming to reduce new HIV diagnosis to 750 by the end of the decade by boosting testing with state-supplied home kits, expanding treatment with less costly drugs, and reducing new infections. He made the announcement at the Gay Pride Parade. It's uh, an ambitious goal, but again, it's fitting. Uh, New York State paid a terrible, terrible price for this disease. This year, the state expects 3,000 new HIV cases. In 1993, there were 14,000. Julie Walker, New York. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. The nation's quadriplegics immobilize on Washington in support of stem cell research. And a Penn State t-shirt is awkwardly looked away from. And now for the weekly feature your fragile, susceptible mind already has your lips salivating for. This is The Onion Week in Review. Sources reported today that 10-year-old Brandon Thomas, who is currently homesick at his friend Kevin's sleepover, needs to just tough it the f*** out. I don't feel like playing Xbox right now. The pathetic little bitch who claims he just doesn't feel like eating any birthday cake or joining in any activities with his friends, frankly needs to grow a pair because his parents only live 10 minutes away, for Christ's sake. Here's what the whiny pansy had to say for himself. I wasn't crying. It's just allergies. I want to go home. What a f***ing wuss. In other news, a voicemail from mom is deleted three words in, and a man with nice eyes is blown. All right, now off with you. I can't have you seeing me like this. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever's on your mind. Just dial in toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype again now that we are back in our keen New Hampshire studios after having done a week's worth of shows in the middle of the woods at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Uh, we now have our internet access, uh, quality internet access back. It was nice, though, at Porkfest to actually have usable internet most of the time throughout the festival. For longtime attendees, you will know that uh, you'll remember that internet has been terrible uh, at Porkfest in the past. But thanks to some enterprising, well, one enterprising individual, uh, Michael Hampton, who's one of our uh, technical advisors behind the scenes here at Free Talk Live, uh, he provided internet access for more than twice as many people this year. Because he started last year at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and this year he had more than twice as many orders, uh, exceeding his amount of orders that he had from the year prior within two days, I think, of setting up his internet access. Wow. So, uh, Derek J., welcome to Free Talk Live. Hey, good to be with you. Well, welcome back, actually. In fact, this is like a, a radio marathon for you today. You filled in as host for the Angel Clark Show today, correct? That's correct, yes. So for the last two hours at LRN.FM, I've been holding it down for the Angel Clark Show. And now you're going to clock in another three hours here on Free Talk Live. Then you're going to appear on this man's show. Michael W. Dean is with us from the Freedom Fiends. My understanding, Derek J is going to be on for another two hours of radio after this tonight. Do we have Michael Dean? Michael yeah, Dean. yeah, yeah. I thought you. I see. It's so weird. I've been doing like stuff with people in different parts of the country. I can't see. I go out for a week to where I'm sitting in the room with my co-hosts, and now I'm like waiting for the visual cue. <laughs> I thought you were talking to Derek, man. 
<laughs> it so, was a life changing experience. So I right. recommend it for everybody. Well, that's a that's a pretty big thing to say, Michael W. Dean. Uh, and I I have to say I was really pleased to be able to see meet you and your wife uh, DJ. Uh, for the first time ever, you mentioned that you actually hadn't come out to any sort of event in almost a decade. I think it was like 07 or something was the last time you went out to something like this. And, and of course, you've never been to anything like Pork Fest before. But uh, Well, I've been to a lot of events where, you know, the people who are the minority get together with other people who are the minority and don't feel like as much of a mi- minority. And it's a great thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but so, uh, What was life-changing about the Porcupine Freedom Festival for you? Because that's a pretty big thing to say. Uh, these people exist. First of all, I got to meet my little friends from the internet, as we call each other. You know, I met all the fiends, all my co-hosts that I'm doing shows with. I hung out with them, got to know them, met Ben Stone, met you, met Mark, met, uh, Derek J, met Derek Slopey, the Meow Bit guy, mm-hmm. met Ernest Hancock. It's like, you know, you do all this stuff on the internet and then you realize these people are real. And the other thing is, not just meeting my imaginary friends from the internet, but seeing Lib Pair, you know, Libertarian Paradise in action. This literally was it for a week. I mean, there were really no laws, no, 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 like, you know, mad main law, mad man made laws, but nobody got hurt, nobody got harmed. Uh, I didn't see any fights, I didn't see any arguments. Some people were intoxicated, people were carrying guns, there was nothing dangerous happened. Yes, there were uh, there were guns and weed and other drugs uh, present at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and everything was okay. In fact, Derek and I were talking on the last night uh, at the campfire, which unfortunately you couldn't attend. You were there for several days during the week, but you had to take off early. Uh, but observing that it didn't seem like there were as many drunk people at Pork Fest this year as in uh, last say last year, for instance. Yeah, I uh, I'm sober 20 years, and I didn't feel like. Oh, my God, people are drunk. Well, I did meet, like, Gigi Bowman, met my wife, and then spilled a drink on her. That was about it. I'm not saying there weren't drunk people at yeah. Fest, just that there weren't as many of them, or at least if there were, they weren't as obviously drunk. As, and it was uh, pretty easy to, you know, like, nobody, I didn't feel like I was at a, a frat party or anything. You know, I didn't feel like I couldn't get away. I could just walk over one campground and get away from anybody who was really loud. Nobody mm-hmm. followed me drunk and yelled at me. Right. You know, like they have at some <laughs> other events. You, uh, you were tripping for the first time ever on radio. That's a radio first, Ian. You mean on your show? On, on uh, my Freedom show. Fiends. Oh, you're the consummate professional. You'd never trip on your show, but you'll trip on my show, and it was great. <laughs> it and, was a uh, very, very light trip. Uh, it wasn't much of one at all. It was some old, old LSD that I took. Vintage. <laughs> yeah, the problem was is it from the seventies? LSD no, was probably no more than two or three years old. Okay. The problem is LSD doesn't hold up very well no. over time, especially when exposed to heat. Mm-hmm. Um, even if you keep it in the dark. But uh, no, it was awesome. It was great to get to experience Freedom Fiends, and I was there on both of your live nights. Your show was live uh, three times, but you were on it two out of those three times. I was flying yeah. there one night. You know? I, I got to see uh, s- some parts of the episode with Ian, but I was there for the whole episode Wednesday, Michael, and it was historic. I really felt like this was, was just great. one of the most amazing episodes of the Freedom Fiends ever. It's going to be really mm-hmm. hard to top tonight. Yeah, it was, uh, it was in the top 10 of 420-some episodes we've done, and it was the definitely the best post Vidati episode it was uh it was really cool it really gelled it was really fun what did you say to me ian about uh windowless bunkers and getting out of the house <laughs> uh i was really really impressed i uh I, you know i didn't know what to expect out of a guy who brags about living in a windowless bunker and not leaving <laughs> and not socializing and it turned out you're a real showman like you put on a performance for people and in a very funny way with i think it was davi who uh, termed it physical comedy well davi uh, but- said physical comedy doesn't work on radio but i listened to it today and even though i was there i forgot that i was there and it worked because we're explaining it most of it was explained although i felt like there were a few times where the co-host could have given some more explanation as to what was going on off mic um but otherwise you know it's a middle of the show or middle of the night kind of show and i thought it went very very well how'd you like having a live audience too uh michael that must have been different for the show it was fabulous and uh there was actually a segment that only they saw and they really loved <laughs> that didn't go out because I broke the internet. I was playing with the effects. As soon as Ian said he was he was tripping, I reached over and re- like quietly started playing, adding effects, uh, pitch shifting <laughs> up and down. 
on Ian and Davi to see if Ian had noticed it. And he finally noticed it. And we left it on, but it was only going to the speakers in the room. It wasn't going out on radio. And then I uh, hit the wrong button. You know, being the, I, I am the consummate audio professional, but uh, not with that mixer necessarily. And uh, yeah, it, it cut us out for one like 15, 20 minute segment. And then I think they lost it. I think the internet connection broke on the second night because I listened, I went through the GCN archives and, you know, they, they absolutely like record everything as it goes out. And there mm -hmm. was in the second, the first, the night before that, there was like, or the night after that, there was like a 10 minute section of like jazz music playing. And then they went to a, an episode that was two weeks old for a while and then came back. Davi Barker also had ports, pork scouts badges that uh, one oh, yeah. of them was honoring you, Michael, with creamy no, radio audio. It was honoring the fiends. Did you get one of those? It was for the co-hosts. Yeah, yeah, but then other people could use them as well. Like if they oh, have yeah. a blog of their own or a uh, a podcast of their own, and they've got creamy radio audio. I think it's going to do a lot to inspire other liberty lovers to produce media like that. Yeah, we made a new one. We haven't made badges of it yet, but he and I, he came up with you know. There's this saying, "Not my circus, not my monkeys." It's a Polish phrase for like, uh, I don't want no part of that, man. That's your problem. Uh, but he he sent me that he made a badge of that with like a flying monkey that looks like it's tripping from Wizard of Oz on it, and I I had him change it to my circus, my monkeys, and we're gonna make that. It's gonna be the one. Uh, it's gonna be the the badge for the award for uh, cat herding above and beyond the Call of Duty. Cat herding, like actual cats, or just like no, herding like anarchists, people, like people, yeah, yeah like herding anarchists, <laughs> you know, like like making your little your little, you know, whatever whatever planet you are in the libertarian universe, and you have your like things revolving around you, which is kind of like what Porkfest was. It was like all these rock stars with their followers running around, then everyone who's just camping and having fun, and then like the little garage bands who aren't rock stars, like like the fiends, and it's like all of this stuff of hurting and trying to get people to the same place at the same time for like, you know, like trying to organize and pull off, which we did the um, freedom fiends, first annual corporate retreat, barbecue and team oh. building exercise. <laughs> so cute. Which you made this video of, you put it up. It's cool. You yeah. Guys, videos actually, already online. Well, what you did was oh, Michael, yeah. you got your co-host together. Cause for people that aren't familiar with the freedom fiends, it is an overnight show during the week. And then on weekends, it's middle of the afternoon. Uh, via our uh, Genesis Communications Network syndicate also airs on LRN.FM. And uh, your co-hosts are, except for DJ, your wife, all living somewhere else. And yeah. you brought them all together, or most of them, to the Porcupine Freedom Festival, and y'all actually got to meet up in person, which must have been pretty cool. Absolutely. Glad to know you well, had a good time, Michael W. Dean, and I hear you back might be going year. back next Oh, we're coming year. back. As soon as it's announced, yes. we're booking our hotels, and a few months after that, booking our plane tickets. Unless, of course, you've already moved by that point uh, to New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> Always with the moving. <laughs> Thanks for the call tonight. <laughs> Thanks, Appreciate hearing from you. Michael W. Dean from FreedomThemes.com. We'll continue. Your thoughts are welcome on anything. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Mano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. BuzzBox Coffee's organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm. This time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. 
It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here, 855-450 free. You may bring up whatever you want. You can also do that via Skype. Our Skype username is LRN.FM. Do send a contact request first. It will be approved, and then you'll be easily able to contact us on Skype. Get on the air and sound almost like you're sitting in the studio with me, Ian. And Derek J. Derek J., the host of Peace News Now, peacenewsnow.com. Go there to get a whole lot more of Derek J. He does a long-form show and also posts stuff throughout the week there, correct? Yes, Yes, I do like blog stuff. If uh, there's a peaceful resistor, someone going to jail for, say, collecting rainwater, as sometimes happens, I think that's important to report over at peacenewsnow.com. So I want to talk more about your experience at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. But first, we go to Aaron listening in St. George, Utah, to KZNU. Hello, Aaron. Hey, guys. I just wanted to, to uh, see if you had a chance yet to talk about that semi-truck driver that pulled over a police officer. What? Tell me about that. Oh, my gosh. You guys haven't seen this. Okay. I've been um, in the woods I, for a I week. Don't... I haven't seen any news. If something <laughs> happened in the world in the last week, I have no idea what it was. Hey, well, for good reason. Porter, the Porcupine uh, Freedom Festival is awesome, so good for you guys for doing that, supporting that organization. So, so tell me the story. The line is, uh, okay, so the story, I, I actually found it through the drudgereport.com. I put it up mm -hmm. on Free Talk Live. Oh, thank you. Uh, as uh, uh, one of the show topics to vote on. But I linked to it there. But you know what was amazing about it? I said this truck driver, I guess, driving along, semi-truck driver, 18-wheeler, and a trooper flew by him. I think the they said the speed limit was 60 miles an hour, and he flew by at like 70, and mm -hmm. he was on his cell phone. And in this particular uh, state, I guess there's uh, – you assume from watching the video that there's a, uh, some type of law prohibiting cell phone driving or something along those lines. Because the truck driver basically speeds up, comes up to this officer going, you know, however fast it needed to, to catch this officer, 
and he turns on a voice or video re- recorder. It looked like an iPhone or something that was just based towards the, the to the dashboard. And the officer comes up and says, "Hey, why why did you have your horn? Why are you just honking on your horn? You know, uh, what's your problem? What's wrong with your horn?" And he's like, "I had to pull you over." And he, and, and the officer said, well, "Well, what for?" He's like, "Well, you were speeding and you had your cell phone in your hand." And it's wet roads out there. You're 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. You're on your cell phone. And it would look like you weren't even paying attention. And this truck driver laid this out so perfectly. And the cop at first dug down really quick and said, well, you know, how do you know I was speeding? Do you have a radar gun or do you have a recording device? And then, you know, they went back and forth. He's like, I know you were. I saw you. And he said, by the way, I'm recording you right now. And then he picks up the phone and records the rest of the conversation, uh, kind of, you know, actually records the officer Mm -hmm. in the door of his truck. From there, the officer just goes kind of like grass for straws. He goes for, you know, well, why were you using your horn illegally? You were using it illegally. He's like, I wasn't using it illegally. I was trying to get your attention. You were speeding. Anyway, goes through the whole thing. And then the officer asks for the time log. Let me see how many hours you have left for the day. Are you overdriven on your time? kind of grasping for straws then he goes back to his car and comes back and it almost you see like this change of heart come over he's like well i saw you just got pulled over a broken headlight and so i'm not going to write you up for this this instance and uh, i actually ran an inspection on your truck and it turned out clean and anyway you can see him kind of just backpedal all the way out and try to smooth it over with this guy and the guy didn't, didn't back off, didn't say he wasn't going to not show the video online, didn't say any of that. He said, but you were speeding, and you shouldn't be held above the law. And anyway, you guys have got to see this. you got to put it up on uh, Free Talk Live. Watch it during the break real quick, two or three minutes, and then come back and talk about it. It's an incredible video. Cool, do you think man. this is something that other drivers could do? Well, absolutely. You know what? At the very end, the driver picks up his phone. He turns it and points to his face. He's like, and that's what happens when the police know that they're recorded. Basically, uh-huh. they backpedal, they change their approach, and they become sympathetic to the fact that they were just caught doing something that they shouldn't have. So, Aaron, now, the backpedaling I, started when the cop noticed he was being recorded? Oh, after, after the truck driver made it clear that he was recording yeah. and also made it clear that he was being recorded on his dash cam, when the officer came back, from his car, running his driver's license and everything, it was a completely different tone. Mm-hmm. But what's so astonishing is to see the difference in clear day being videotaped in real time, in action. You can see the change. Now, any one of us caught in a lie, we do this. We do this naturally, and we'll say, okay, you know, I can either dig down and be a jerk and really, you know, double down on my lie, or I can come back and try to smooth things over. This was an example where I believe the officer was really trying to smooth things over so he wouldn't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the truck driver said, look, you still were speeding. It doesn't change the fact that you gave me a perfect inspection and that you're not writing me a ticket and that you're sorry that you were going too fast. You were speeding. Ultimately, I was very impressed by the way that this truck driver handled the situation. And I think it's a model for every one of us that that are are liberty-minded and want to hold everybody equally accountable under the law. I'm impressed by this truck driver too, Aaron, but I have to at least point out one observation that the officer, before backpedaling on his tone and going all nicey nicey, was. You've seen this? No, oh, okay. but uh, as it's described by Aaron, it sounds like the officer was still under the I'm investigating a crime stance. He was yeah. saying, saying, well, you over. know, hey, you've uh, used your horn illegally. You know, I'm, I'm going to run a background check, see what other things you've got. Mm-hmm. How? Let me check your logs. You know, he was still doubling down. So while I would be hopeful that more people pulling over cops and recording cops would have the effect that police officers would be friendlier and more honest, it seems just as likely that the cops will just be um, jerks. M- yeah, more more like jerks. Well, you're right. And, and to be clear, at first it was an investigation. At first he was going to give a ticket for using the horn illegally. At first he doubled down and was totally disagreeing with the truck driver and saying, no, you're wrong, that's not true, I wasn't on my phone, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It wasn't until the truck driver pointed the phone at him and said, well, I'm recording this right now, and my cash, or my, my, uh, my, uh, 
um, I'm sorry, my dash cam caught this whole thing. Mm. Then, the, then the officer went back to run the license. Nope. <laughs> and then the moment of reflection in the car, I think, realized at that point, like, oh, shoot, I better, I either can pull this out and fix it right now, or he could have, could have still went down that same road, like, I'm going to give you a ticket for the, the horn and those things. I'm not saying it's right, but it's just interesting to see the That's evolution awesome. have of you ever, so have, quickly. Have you ever recorded the police, Aaron? I personally have never recorded the police, but I've always been impressed. I've never had an opportunity, to be honest with you, but I've always been impressed by those people who do it. And um, you're an inspiration to me for those people who, who record anyway, not just the police. I'm a public official. I work for government personally. And when someone holds me accountable or holds one of my peers accountable, I still think that that's the right thing to do. And so I, I, I applaud these people. I think it's a good thing. Aaron, I want to thank you for the heads up. I've got the story here. I'll post it over on our Facebook, Google+, Plus, Twitter, so people can check out the video. And, and I will check it out when we get a chance. Hey, you should get yourself a live streaming app on your phone. Be ready. Yeah, uh, Bambuser yeah. is the one that I use. B-A-M-B-U-S-E-R. What about you, Derek? Jay? I use that as well. Thanks, Aaron, for the call tonight. And, yeah, all you have to do is install this app. It's free. Take a moment to get it set up. you got to install it and set it up. Make sure it's working. And once it's working, all you do is you launch that app when you want to go live to the Internet, and it records to your phone at the same mm-hmm. time. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. You take control. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! 
What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want right here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Whether it's uh, reflections on this year's Porcupine Freedom Festival, which we can come back to here in a moment, or out-of-control police, in this case, one of them being busted by a truck driver who uh, had his, you know, he's got a dash cam, apparently. Now, the video footage we have is does not appear to be from the dash cam. It appears to be maybe from a cell phone or something like that. So he may have actually had two cameras running uh, during this incident. An Illinois state police officer busted for speeding. Cop then pulls the truck driver. The cop pulls the truck driver over for honking at him. And uh, it's a it's pretty good video so far. We've gone through about two minutes of it, uh, and we'll continue to, to screen it. But you can go and watch it right now. Just link over to our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter, or rather, watch it after the show uh, at your convenience. So we've got it linked up there for you on our Facebook, which you can access quickly by going to news.freetalklive.com. You can get to all of our Twitter, Facebook email lists, all that stuff right there. Coming up on July 19th and 20th, the North American Bitcoin Conference. It's happening in Chicago at the McCormick Place South Building. That's where Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live. We'll be talking to all kinds of interesting Bitcoin people and people from the Liberty Movement because there's a lot of crossover there. So some of the guest speakers uh, that you'll be able to see when you attend the North American Bitcoin Conference include Tony Gallippi from BitPay, uh, Flip Filipkowski of the Peace Action Network, Peter Smith of Blockchain.info, Trace Mayer of the Armory Wallet, Vitalik Baterian of Ethereum, Jeffrey Tucker, who we just saw a few days ago at Porkfest, he'll be there uh, from Liberty.me, and Brock Pierce from Investing in Digital Currency, and many more. Go to btcchicago.com. You can buy your tickets with Bitcoin. It, as I understand, it's only 100 bucks to go to this convention in Chicago. So get your tickets now at btcchicago.com for July 19th and 20th, the North American Bitcoin Conference. Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live, as I mentioned. So uh, maybe a little bit more about this video of the police officer and, and kind of the idea of recording the police. The gentleman who called in considers himself a liberty-minded person. He looks up to the people who record the police. And I can understand why someone would be hesitant towards pulling out a video camera because there it are It can those- look antagonistic, can well, it? I mean, you, you're showing that uh, you want to document this in case anything happens, right? Sure, and I'm sure the police would like you to believe that they're just going to be nicey-nice and there'd be no chance of anything bad happening. So why not just put the camera away? But then again, if you don't have anything to hide, officer, what's the problem with having a video camera documenting this? What's the problem with having a an objective viewpoint or record? Well, of, they'll make something up. It's disorderly conduct. You need to have your hands free or something like that. Or they think it's a gun or something right. ridiculous like I've, that. They've, they've said that on video sometimes. I, that camera could be a gun. Right. Well, you're saying it's a camera, yeah. so... It's recording you right here. You want to see? Do you, have you ever seen a gun with a camera mount, mounted <laughs> in it? Uh, it's just crazy paranoia in, in the uh, on the part of the police in that case. But uh, there have been a lot of instances where bringing a video camera out could be argued that it does result in the police escalating a situation, whereas you could theorize that they wouldn't have in the uh, in the opposite um, scene. But there's no evidence for that, right? You can't play out the scene both ways. You never. That's the problem with uh, with you know doing activism is you can't ever compare apples to apples. It's very very rare that you can get a situation. With activists and police, and when you pull out a camera to record the police, as far as I'm concerned, you've become an activist at that moment. Um, but you know, you can never compare the exact two situations. Even if you get pulled over again by a police officer, 
you know, odds are good it's not going to be the same officer in the same circumstances. Your passengers might be different. And every bit of activism affects the next. I mean, if this cop That's is true. ever pulled over by a honking trucker again, you can bet he's going to act differently. He may be, behave differently. That's true. And even the people in his department who hear anecdotes about this story or watch the video themselves, they're going to act differently. Troopers who are from other states who see this video are going to act differently. So every time someone records or does activism, it's going to change the outcome of future events. I believe, though, Derek J., and this is after years and of, of recording the police in various different circumstances in different places, and I and I don't know if you would agree, I, I'm, I wonder if you're going to agree with me on this, that in general, bringing out a video camera, despite the times where the, the police act violently in front of a camera, and that has happened. I mean, I was kidnapped for recording video in Palmer, Massachusetts, Town Hall just for walking through the town hall and recording video. Mm -hmm. So you never know when they're going to strike. They could strike. But I believe that recording the video recording video of police in general makes a situation better. Oh yeah. That, that overall the police will behave better when on camera. And I think that also applies to whether or not you are the victim, whether or not you are the one who they're targeting, the one they're pulling over. Anytime you bring a camera to a police pullover, a police encounter on the streets, or wherever the police are talking to someone, whether it's you or someone else, I think it's generally for the better. Well, that's an interesting one because it can absolutely go both ways. Yes. Typically, when someone's being recorded, they act uh, more They act more honest. They're more accountable. There's um, anecdotal evidence of convenience stores setting up a fake camera and then leaving money out on the, the table so that people can go and pay for their coffee or their paper or whatever themselves. When they've got a camera uh, looking down on the register, yep. everyone pays. There's no problem. No one steals. They take their paper, coffee, whatever it is, and they're perfectly accountable for their actions. However, as we saw in the example of this officer being pulled over by a, a truck or vice versa, the officers actually used the words, I'm exempt. I, I am exempt from the law. Right, because right? the trucker accused him of being on a cell phone. Yeah, so he was saying, well, we're allowed to use technology. Right. So I think, yeah, it works both ways. Cops, they want to be more honest when they're on camera because everyone does. Mm -hmm. But then again, they're cops and they have this mentality that I'm exempt from the law. So, for the most part, they are. I mean, well, yeah, when, that is true. When they get in trouble, for instance, the Palmer, Massachusetts situation where I was arrested, I have no idea if it, or, at all the officer who arrested me was disciplined in any way, shape, or form. He did not cut me the five thousand dollar check that uh, was a settlement in that case. I worked with the Massachusetts Civil Liberties Union, and that case was kicked out of court, and I got a settlement out of that. And you know, the huh. lawyer took a little bit of it too, uh, but that well, didn't come out of his paycheck. Well, yeah, and that's what I love about the activism that Aaron brought up about recording the cops because yeah while they don't face the same consequences as regular people when they commit crimes they do have to face the consequence of public shame and being on camera and yep. looking bad for their organization you know it really strikes uh it, it does damage to the veil of legitimacy of their organization when they look bad on camera. when they look bad on camera and they're not exempt from that That's i mean true. they may be exempt from consequences in other ways but they're not exempt from their appearance on camera they can't escape that so not only do i think that in general recording the police brings more safety to a situation it will uh, make a situation more likely to go in the favor of the victim okay because when a when a police yeah. officer encounters you you're going to lose something. At the very least, you're going to lose your time trying to, you know, extract yourself from that situation or get the police to to leave you alone. Mm -hmm. So at the very least, you're going to lose time. At worst case, you'll lose your life. And then in between there, there's varying different levels of what you could lose. You could lose your freedom. You could, you know, get hurt physically, uh, etc. You're thinking about it so negative, Ian. You gain a ticket. You <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly their perspective uh, on things. But you're going to lose something. And uh, and we all want to minimize the amount of damage that the police can do to our lives and to our friends. And I think that's what the camera does in the long haul. But you have to use cameras and you have to use them often mm -hmm. in a in a, the same area in order to really effectively train the police. Yes. So it's useful for people to, wherever it is you happen to live. Uh, <laughs> train the police. I like how you is. put that. Yeah, it's, that's, like, I mean, it's like they're dogs and they need to be taught to how to respond to a camera oh no bad boy it's <laughs> you've been true. bad it's absolutely true though because you know so look sad. at the police and how they behave in Keene, new hampshire there's never an issue they're well behaved on camera no in Keene, new hampshire that's because we have tread those waters here we mm -hmm. have created that 
uh, that reaction from the police of, okay, we know what's happening here. We know how to handle this. All right, well, let's just get the job done. <laughs> and like last night, uh, just a couple streets down from the studio here, Mark was leaving after the show. He calls me up. Of course, he doesn't stop to do anything. But he calls me up to say, hey, there's some guy getting arrested in your neighborhood. So I you know, grab my video <laughs> camera, hop on my bike, and head down there. And unfortunately, you know, I didn't get there until after the arrest had transpired. But they sure did wrap up that scene once I arrived. Now, you could argue they were going to wrap it up anyways. But, I mean, I literally had the camera going for 30 seconds before they're packing it up and, and heading out. So I've seen, and, and I have seen situations where I have been there when it started. And I've seen the police back down. I've seen multiple cars arrive, and then they all leave without even ticketing a person because we were there. More coming up here. What's your experience? There's a lot of confusing information out there about Bitcoin mining. Customers have been burned by companies taking their money on pre-orders for Bitcoin mining equipment, only to receive their equipment late and miss out on opportunities to mine Bitcoins. But that doesn't mean Bitcoin mining is impossible. You just have to find an honest company to do business with. If you want to mine Bitcoins and you want to do it now, no pre-orders, no waiting. Look into the AntMiner products from Bitmain. Their competitively priced AntMiners are in stock and ship from the U.S. as soon as you pay. You could buy an AntMiner today and be mining Bitcoins tomorrow. The AntMiner line offers the best mining power per dollar currently available. 20% of the mining power in the Bitcoin network is contributed by AntMiners. Not only that, but Bitmain is committed to support. You can get tech support and warranty service over the phone by calling 844-BITMAIN. For commercial accounts, they'll even travel to your data center to install your equipment. Get all the details at bitmaintech.com. That's bitmaintech.com. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host Cheryl for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com
If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever you want. What has been your experience with recording the police? Derek J. and I have a lot of it, but what about you? Uh, you, you know, Have you had positive experiences? Have you seen the police behave better when on camera, or did they turn bad or get worse uh, when you pulled out a video camera? Did they attack you, grab the camera? What has been your experience? You're welcome to share it. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. That's 855 450 3733 and join us via Skype. Our Skype username, lrn.fm. You know, there are a whole bunch of reasons that someone like you might want a second passport or to renounce your citizenship. Last year was an all time record for people renouncing U.S. citizenship, and people do this all over the world, whether it's governmental intrusion on privacy, protest against foreign policy, to protect your wealth, avoid pointless regulations, onerous taxation, or as a refuge, you might want to get a second passport or even change your citizenship. Check out the St. Kitts program at PassportsForBitcoin.com. Now, they take Bitcoin, and that's yet another way that Bitcoins can offer you more freedom. Go to PassportsForBitcoin.com as we continue here. Your thoughts, certainly welcome. Uh, Derek J. and I are kind of talking about the process of recording the police and, as I had suggested earlier, training them, essentially, mm-hmm. giving getting them used to the idea of recording. Because if you've got a department that has had issues where officers have gone outside the bounds of their so-called authority and restricted freedom of the press and, you know, confiscated a camera illegally. And they've been smacked for that, like, say, Palmer in in Massachusetts, where they arrested me for walking through town hall with a video camera. They lost that case, and they had to pay a settlement. In a situation like that, it's very likely that a memo went out to all of the officers saying, look— if somebody's got a video camera, you got to let them, eh, sorry, but you got to let them record or something like that. Because eventually, if a town loses too many suits in this way, as Weir, New Hampshire just did recently with the president of the Free State Project winning a wiretapping suit there, uh, they're going to lose too many suits. They're going to have to start paying more for their insurance rates because each town has an insurance policy that covers the cost of going to court over these matters. And whenever they lose, that policy goes up. So there and is an incentive for them to behave, but they have to, in some cases, get smacked legally first, which is expensive. It's not just money or uh, legal incentives, but they lose their legitimacy. When, That's a big factor. When in the Ware Police case, when the president of the Free State Project was charged with wiretapping for filming the police, and then they lose the case, it becomes clear that, hey, the cops didn't like that they were being recorded, and they used retribution to throw charges against a political activist Mm -hmm. and tried to throw her under the bus, tried to get her locked up for a serious charge. And what was it all for? So that they could hide from accountability. So I think recording the police and other bureaucrats is the most important activism anyone can do. I agree. And and you're right. They are more afraid of showing up on YouTube and having their legitimacy damaged than they are a lawsuit. Uh, uh, that's no skin off their back. Someone yeah. else pays for it. Right. So but, but what they do care about is when that badge doesn't look so shiny anymore. And uh, that's what you can do. Uh, you can have that... Uh, Put it, you can have that app on your smartphone device, and I believe Bambuser is available for iPhone it and is. Android phones and maybe some other uh, phone apps as, uh, or phone operating systems as well. So go check that out, Bambuser, B-A-M-B-U-S-E-R. And just, you know, t- it takes some practice. Uh, for instance, the Cop Block video contest has now happened two years, and I've had the honor of being able to be one of the few judges of that contest. Mm-hmm. And a lot of uh, submissions came in this year, and... You know, a lot of them, I thought, all right, well, you know, it's good that the camera person is out there and recording. Like, there's points are deserved for that. Yes. But it takes practice and gumption to cross the street, for instance, and get closer to a scene where you could actually see and hear what's going on. There was a lot of footage from, you know, like across a parking lot or across a street where you could see the police had pulled somebody over. You could see, you know, there might have been a DUI check being administered or something like that. You could kind of determine to some extent what was going on, but you really didn't know, you know, what was actually happening. So there's different levels of being able to record the police as well. Yeah, but getting in close can be very dangerous. It can be. If uh, people aren't prepared, I mean, if you're the only guy with the video camera, I'm against getting too close because you need Good someone point. to daisy chain and back you up. Like, 
uh, Dave Ridley, who's a video activist here in New Hampshire, uh, recommended this to me whenever I do filming activism, is make sure you have someone who's getting the shot behind your shot so that if you're arrested, mm. if you're going into the front lines, then there's someone who captures that arrest and perhaps even someone behind that or perhaps even someone across the street who's filming everything that's going on, someone in a safety zone. So what's essential is that you have someone who's getting up close, getting audio and video so that's usable, and then someone in the back who's just making sure that everyone's safe. Gets the whole perspective on uh, the situation as well. This is very important, what you're talking about. And it's also advanced-level activism, right? Like being yeah. more than just you, having more than one person. Like if you've got a cop block chapter where you live or nearby where you live, there may be other people who are willing to kind of go out and hit the streets and and patrol uh, looking for police. That would be you know kind of one action that cop blockers can do. But having more people is definitely the way to go. Although even if it is just you... Recording is still better than not. Another tip that uh, I find helpful is when I first installed my live streaming app on my phone, I thought it was good to go. I thought mm. I was ready. I went to pull it out one time to go Oops. live stream and show someone how easy it you is. Logged in. Whoops. Yep, I was not ready, and it took a few minutes to yep. set up. So if that were a real emergency, uh, that screwed. I would have been in a world of hurt. And what I recommend to people from now on is when you set up a live streaming app, go ahead and record a video. Yep, test hey, it out. Make, make a video. Hey, this is my live stream channel. Check back here for updates. If anything's going on, you'll see it live. Yep. You know, And that's a good way to test, make sure it works. You know what you're using. And then you're proficient with your tool for activism. It's essential. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort. And then, you know, what you can also do is move your little icon for it to the your main page or your main mm -hmm. kind of bar, whatever it is you use the most. I always have mine on my home page on my, my Android phone. Well, because you got to imagine when you're in a high stress situation, motor skills are not working as they normally do. The and fewer so you button presses, the better. That's right. Yeah. Let's go to Adam. He's in Maryland uh, listening via LRN.FM. Hello, Adam. Hey, guys. Welcome hey. back, Derek J. I don't know if you've been on the show recently, but uh, it's he's, good to hear your voice. Yeah, Thanks, he's back Adam. on Mondays as of the last few weeks, so welcome uh, to you. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yeah, I, I think, uh, like you said, recording cops um, really gives citizens the upper hand because um, I'm sure you all know in a courtroom, you know, having that camera as an eyewitness is a vital tool because juries, judges, they tend to believe cops over over normal citizens. You Absolutely. Know, that, that that uniform, that badge, uh, it, you know, gives them some kind of air of credibility, which is a bunch, you know, <laughs> laughable to me and and you and you, you and and uh, Derek as well. But you know, that you know the the public in the public eye, they're the cops are always telling the truth. Yep. How much experience um, do you have with recording cops, Adam? Really, I've only had two incidents. Um, one time I was being tossed out of a mall for protesting, even though I had a permit to protest. Hmm. The, other the other time I was protesting, I tried to get a permit, but they denied me. And both times we had cameras, um, and both times, you know, I wouldn't say their behavior changed necessarily, but they were a little bit nicer than I think they would have been if the camera wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say the most important thing is, and I think you, you, you just said it, live stream, use stream, uh, bamboozer, you have to be streaming live because these cops will take your cameras, they'll take your cell phones, and delete your footage. They, let you know, let they, them they, know, they, too, as well. So it's important to stream live to the Internet, and I think also to inform the officer, officer, you are being recorded and live streamed to the Internet let them know. Let them, those words pierce through their mind. It may take them a moment before they realize, whoa, I can't confiscate this one, can I? Yep. Now, that may or may not be true. You could also, if you aren't even sure, like you may even have a, no internet connection, you could give them, you could say something like this. Officer, you are being recorded and you may be being streamed live to the internet. You know, even if you, or I don't think it's wrong to necessarily lie to a cop. Of course, if it's a federal cop, then it's a federal crime because they certainly are, are trained to lie to you. So I don't think it's wrong to say you are are being live streamed even if you know you're in a dead zone or something like that because yeah, uh, anything I, I to like, get them to I, think that they are on the line then they need to be careful i like that that the words that you use you may be live streamed because it's kind of like how they say i'm asking you to because mm -hmm. they're not actually command they're not they're not commanding you 
they're asking you to do that. If there's a difference legally. They, they usually um, say, I'm going to have to ask you, because to put have yeah. to in front makes it sound more like an order. Right, right. Yep. And, you know, if you say you may be, that's not saying you are. <laughs> yep. You know, and that, that um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, this video, I don't know if you guys linked to the original video. It looks like you did. Yes. But it it really concerns me when you have um, websites like E-Bombs World, the BBC, I think CNN, all these different websites, they take, you know, this person's video and then they put it on their own website and make money off of it with ads and stuff. Like, doesn't that bother you guys? No, no it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, thanks for the call, you. Adam. I appreciate hearing you More from views. you tonight. 855-450 free. Please borrow our videos and do whatever you want. If you can make a million bucks off of them, great. You know Bellawood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bellawood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bellawood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bellawood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and black forest laminate for only $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, June 30th, 2014. Silver is trading at $20.86 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,313 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $628. Antiwar.com reports, reflecting its virtually uncontested control over a broad swath of land in Iraq and Syria, the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, ISIS, has announced the formation of a new nation dubbed simply the Islamic State. According to the announcement, the Islamic State has been determined by Shura Council to be the restoration of the Caliphate, and ISIS leader Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi has been declared the Caliph. While the Islamic State has been a de facto state for quite some time, albeit one with ill-defined borders engaged in multiple wars, the declaration of themselves as the new Caliphate is likely to fuel controversy around the world and a direct challenge to Islamic factions. That's because a Caliphate claims to be the direct successor of the Prophet Muhammad, and its Caliph would at least claim to be the consensus final religious authority for all of Sunni Islam. Caliphates have a long history across the Middle East with dominant caliphates ruling significant territory and wielding broad influence through much of history. 
For centuries, Ottoman sultans also held the position of caliph. In 1924, Turkey dissolved the institution of caliphate, and there has been no consensus caliph since. In recent decades, several Islamist factions have called for the restoration of the caliphate, though naturally each has envisioned itself at the head, and none has gained anywhere near this much traction. With the declaration, ISIS is making an enormous power play, aiming to put itself for in command of all faithful Sunnis on a religious level. While that's unlikely to matter across the broader Sunni world, except as a slap in the face, among Salafist factions like Al-Qaeda, this is a direct challenge and a call for Al-Qaeda and other such factions to submit to a position under Baghdadi's rule. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit bitcoinnotbombs.com. Reuters reports the North Korean government announced that it would put two detained American tourists on trial for crimes against the state. The official North Korean news agency KCNA said their hostile acts were confirmed by evidence and their own testimonies, referring to U.S. citizens Jeffrey Fowl and Matthew Miller, who are being held by the isolated country. It gave no details on when they would face court. Fowl, a 56-year-old street repairs worker from Miamisburg, Ohio, was arrested after entering North Korea as a tourist in late April. Miller was taken into custody by North Korean officials after entering the country in the same month, ripping up his tourist visa and demanding asylum, according to state media. Pyongyang has detained a number of U.S. citizens in the past, using them to extract visits by high-profile figures, including former U.S. President Bill Clinton. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The Libertarian Party held its biannual convention over the weekend. Party activist Nick Sarwark was elected chair and posted the following message on Facebook. As chair of the Libertarian Party, I want to personally ask you to come home. If you have never been a member of the party, but you believe in a human freedom, this is your home. If you joined the Republicans or Democrats believing they would fight for human freedom, but you are disappointed by their broken promises, this is your home. If you were a party member, but left in frustration at something we did or did not do, this is your home. We are ready to welcome you home whenever you are ready. It is time for the prodigals to return and for us to feast in celebration. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After this morning's police raid on Cosmopolitan Magazine's male pleasure laboratory revealed that test subjects were forced to endure horrific abuses and inhumane living conditions, Onion reporters spoke to 23-year-old Daniel Chertok, one of the numerous men exploited for the monthly magazine's studies on erotic stimulation. It was awful. It drove us wild for days on end. Once they made me lather myself with gallons of sexy bath oils and then read thousands of racy text messages until my eyesight began to blur. Then for the next 12 hours, they blasted sultry songs into my ears and made me simulate 50 crazy hot sex moves. They said I couldn't rest until they found the bliss button on my Randy regions. According to Chair Talk, test subjects were often subjected to hours of grueling experimentation at the hands of female scientists. Chair Talk added that many of his fellow subjects were not lucky enough to survive the excruciating treatment. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the second hour of the program. We kick off another week of fun here from our keen New Hampshire studios, the LRN.FM studios. Back. It's nice to be back, although Porkfest is a lot of fun and it's always sad uh, when it's over because it's just 
it's got to be the best week out of the year. I mean, I think it's I think it's pretty safe to to make that statement. Dirk, Always my favorite week of the year. Yeah, Dirk J, you said last year was amazing for you, was the best week of your life, but yet this year, this pork fest, the eleventh pork fest, took the cake for you. It did. It topped the whole thing. I mean, I couldn't believe that after last year's pork fest being the best week of my life, that that could happen again at the same place. But it's true. It happened this week. So uh, Michael W. Dean called in right at the top of the show tonight from Freedom Fiends. It was his first Porcupine Freedom Festival. How many were you now? This Three? is number two. Number two. Only yep. number two. Yep. Um, so, wow. Uh, the for year- me, number seven. Wow. Yeah. And, um, you know, I wouldn't say it was a life-changing pork fest for me because I've mm-hmm. been to so many of them. But I can understand why it would be for someone who has never experienced it before. I mean, for me, yeah. I came in in 07 for the first first time uh, at pork fest. I'd already lived in New Hampshire, so I knew what it was like to live and be around other freedom-minded people. And that's kind of what pork fest gives you a taste of, as Michael Dean was saying, lib pair, libertarian paradise. For one week, you're surrounded by people who care about freedom and all the cool products and services that they're offering at the campground and uh, lots of this entrepreneurship, people as young as a baby, as old as elderly. I mean, lots of people at the Porcupine Freedom Even some young entrepreneurs. Even there was a a young lady selling 3D printed magnets and uh, trinkets. She was like 12 or something. Yep. And I know Amanda Bolden had some very young people working for her her ice cream stand Yes, uh, as well. So great great place for opportunities, great place to meet people and to have a life-changing experience. I know a lot of people did uh, psychedelics for the first time this week from what I understand, which is always a nice thing because... You know, if you're going to do psychedelic drugs, you need to be in a place with good people. Do them somewhere people. safe. Yes, a safe place with good people. And it could be argued that Porkfest isn't the best place to do uh, psychedelic drugs for the first time. But, it, you know, it just depends on where you are at Porkfest and, yeah, absolutely. and who's around and what the circumstances are. Um, but it was good to hear that there were so many pleasant peaceful uh, experiences, no problems, no no complaints from anyone. But how do you have uh, two life-changing pork fests? I mean, you had one In a last row. Time. I know. Well, there, it's because there are so many people at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Like, yeah, there's a lot of great stuff. There's speakers, events. We get to see live LRN.FM yeah. shows being broadcast there. Uh, the vendors are also awesome. I mean, having bacon pancakes was pretty cool. I tried those. They were yeah, great. They were awesome. Uh, being able to trade in alternative currencies. All these things make Porkfest the uh, wonderful heaven on earth, mm. uh, as it is for me. But what makes it the best week of my life is meeting all of the wonderful people who are also working on the Freedom Project. The, the people who are creating podcasts, writing blog posts, organizing uh, all around the world getting people together to talk about the ideas of freedom and share them with their friends and then implement them in their lives. Like John Bush down in Austin is so inspiring. And I never get to see him, you know, he's yeah. down in Austin. But but he did sign a- up for the Free State Project, I believe, at last year's Porkfest. Cool. Yeah. Well, that's encouraging to hear. Now, I don't but- know who the big, like, lot, lots of times at Porkfest, there's, there's always some sort of an announcement about, oh, such and such kind of celebritarian uh-huh. has signed up for the Free State Project. I, I imagine it happened this year, but I just yeah. haven't gotten word yet on, on who that person is. Yeah. But, you know, I always find myself thinking, oh, wouldn't it be great if all these people moved here? Mm-hmm. Because in a lot of places, there's just nobody who cares about freedom or very, very few people. I forget who said it, but I thought it was really, uh, really prescient, perhaps, that, uh, you know, where they live, they have five people or where they lived, if they've already moved to New Hampshire, where they once lived, there were five people who believed in freedom. And now they know five people. Now that they moved to New Hampshire, they know five people who aren't liberty oriented, like they're surrounded by them as opposed to it being just slim pickings. And to, that that just makes all the difference, whether it's recording the police like we were talking about earlier, having multiple people recording the police and holding the police accountable, or whether it's just a social scene where you're getting to know people and, and socializing. Yeah, but it's not just a social scene. I mean, I could be comfortable socially anywhere. I'm from Philly. Mm-hmm. I, I, can, I can make friends. It's easy. But then... I want to make friends with the people who are working on cool projects that enhance my f- and their freedom. As opposed like, to talking about sports or cars yeah, or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, you could talk about that stuff anywhere. But, I, I'm, for example, I met Paige Anderson at last year's Porkfest, and she was working on a project called Open Garden, which yes. is a, a mesh network type of thing where people can opt in to share their internet connection with others in the area. And people were using this at Porkfest to get internet access from their friends and neighbors. It was a real proof of concept. Then I saw her again this year, not working on that 
that project anymore, working on an even cooler project <laughs> called MadeSafe, which is decentralizing the entire internet. So wow. meeting these people is really what the big draw is about, and that's what makes it the best. Let's go to Joseph. He's in Georgia listening online. Hey, Joseph. You are hey, on I here. actually met you. I actually met you guys first day at Pork Fest. You may or may not remember me. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Hi. How's it going? Hey, I just got back <laughs> to Georgia. It was a long ride, but I'm actually filling out the form now. To, I'm filling out the pledge. Oh, hey, excellent. congratulations. So it must have made an impression on you, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It must have been your first time? It was, and I knew two days in, that was where I belong. Those were my people. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people who feel that way. There's a, like one of the common refrains that you hear from folks is like, I feel like I've always been here, or I feel like I've always known you people, You know, even though you're usually walking to a group of people that are, by definition, strangers. You've never talked to or met them before, unless you happen to have connected online before Porkfest. Uh, but you know, you've never connected in any reality sort of manner, and yet... Connecting is very easy, and not everybody is perhaps as social uh, as you, Derek J. You know, in, in the liberty movement, a lot of people are notoriously antisocial, and That's they true. find it very difficult to get along with other people, especially if those other people don't share their similar political beliefs, because many people are frustrated by the fact that their friends and family just don't seem to get it when it comes to freedom, and that can be a very difficult thing to uh, to live with. So to come to a place where Oh, wow. It's like a burden has been lifted. You don't have to explain the basics of uh, economics. You don't have to explain what freedom really means and how to allow other peoples to be free without you know, pushing your viewpoint on them. I mean, to, to come to a place like that, it's got to be a really uh, amazing thing. So it sounds like you were blown away, Joseph. Yeah, I knew by the second day that I wanted to move. And basically last night I was standing over the nightly campfire up on the hill and i basically just started crying that i was oh, like this oh. is where i belong i mean awesome. I, I haven't felt listened to like i did there and i just had to call in and share my experience that so then let's, I mean, would you say then anybody who hasn't yet been to the porcupine freedom festival should start planning for next summer most definitely. If you're listening right now and you have not been to the festival, get there next year because it was an incredible experience. Thank you, Joseph, for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. And as soon as we find out what the dates are, we'll let you know here on Free Talk Live because you want to get locked in ASAP. This event... I don't know what the final numbers were. It's definitely up from last year. I talked to Crosby, the owner, on the last day on Sunday, and I asked him about the registrations. He said they were up by 300. Uh, the Porkfest guys said they were up by 300 on pre-registration. So it sounds to me like there might have been 40% more people there because it was like 800 pre-registered last year, 1,100 this year. I think 1,500 people showed up last year. So we may be pushing 2,000 on this event. Joe's testimony almost brought me to tears, yeah. just hearing that, uh, people feeling at home and so welcomed uh, where they never have before. But and Dirk, it's cold in New Hampshire. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's one a serious objection. <laughs> but uh, Joe wasn't the only person who uh, cried on the way home. Yeah. I, I was seeing a lot of Facebook posts of people who were saying, I'm in tears as I'm leaving the Freedom <laughs> Festival. It's, uh, but it doesn't have to be sad because you can mm. come back, you can move. There are lots of people who already have. And yeah, uh, I would love to plans. be joined. You know, even if uh, if you were already planning on moving, see if you can get here sooner rather than later. There's so much exciting stuff happening in New Hampshire outside of the week of Pork Fest. Mm -hmm. I mean, actually, during Pork Fest, the activism scene slows down in New Hampshire <laughs> because everybody's at Rogers Campground. Uh, but there's, you know, we're back now and there's lots to do and we could use your help. Go to freestateproject.org, learn more about what we're doing here, bringing liberty-minded people together to the same place. And we've got all kinds of neat news and your calls coming up here, so you take control at Free Talk Live.
I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm me. comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want by dialing toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro-XPN toll-free line, 855-450-3733. And don't forget, you can get a free pound of coffee. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com for your free pound. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. This is BuzzBox Coffee. That's the brand. And BuzzBox is competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they're doing something special that those other guys aren't doing. They are offering up people around the world the opportunity to buy into their coffee co-op. Plus, 
they and Free Talk Live are teaming up with World Vision to finance microloans for people in poverty around the world. Give them the opportunity to change their own lives. Every 10 Free Talk Live listeners like you who orders their coffee from freetalklive.com, 10 listeners results in one microloan being uh, given out, which is very exciting. So you can get great coffee at a great price and get it now over at coffee.freetalklive.com and help people around the world make a better life for themselves. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You don't have to pay the shipping costs, but the coffee itself will cost you nothing. So go and check that out at coffee.freetalklive.com. As we continue here, I'd like to discuss the Aereo court ruling and what's happening with them here in a moment. In fact, Jeffrey Tucker has written an article about it on his website, liberty.me. So we'll get Jeffrey's perspective and we'll tell you what Aereo is in case you are unaware uh, but first, to the phones, or in this case, to Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, and Benjamin is there in California. Hey, Benjamin. Hello, Ian. Hello, Derek. Hey. Hey. Welcome. <laughs> I'd like to toot my own horn a little bit and also encourage people. Uh, I uh, put together the Free Talk Live Weekly Digest. And yes, you today do. I am happy to be halfway through uh, my, and this was my New Year's resolution, and now I'm halfway through. There are 26 episodes. And you guys are talking about Pork Fest. Well, the latest episode is very Pork Fest heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, almost all of it is Pork Fest related interviews with great people. Uh, Saturday's interviews will be in the next episode. But uh, if people just want to, if they didn't have enough time to listen to all the podcasts, to last week, they should go and check out the Digest and get a flavor for what Pork Fest was like. I have Crosby's in there. Um, uh, the guy who organized Pork Fest is in there. I mean, it's it has a lot of what was going on and their opinions. But you guys were also discussing filming. Well, hold, 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 and, slow down for a moment. Let's get to the filming and just, you've got experience filming the police. Uh, in fact, you were arrested with an encounter with the police. So let's get to that in a moment. First, your weekly digest. Congratulations on hitting 26 episodes, half a year of production here. Because for years, people have been saying, hey, why don't you guys do a highlight reel every week? And of course, my, my usual answer to that was, well, I'm pretty busy. Uh, so why don't you do that? And that's kind of like the classic activist answer out here is whenever somebody comes up with an activist idea that they think is a great idea, usually oh, there's our activist two-way radio in the background there. Um, usually what happens uh, when you know somebody proposes an idea, everybody's got plenty on their plate. Um, you know, we've all got projects that we're working on. And so as much as a good idea as it might be, the, the standard answer tends to be, hey, that's a great idea. You should do that. And of course, most people don't <laughs> want to put the time in that it takes to actually listen to all 14 and podcast it hours of free talk live per week and then take those hours and boil them down uh take the best of those 14 hours and make it into what you do every week which is a 75 minute long not a summary but a highlight reel of uh, of a week's worth of free talk live that that takes time it takes effort and uh you know nobody's paying you to do it necessarily directly you are accepting donations uh benjamin bartholomew and how do people one get the weekly podcast or the weekly uh, digest of free talk live and then two how do they support you for the work that you're putting in well uh first is uh you were kind enough to set uh weekly.freetalklive.com and that goes straight to just a uh like a feed of just the weekly digest episode so maybe you don't want to have all the podcasts, uh, but you do want to have the uh, digest, go to weekly.freetalklive.com. That's right. And then if they're interested in um, supporting what I'm doing, uh, they can go to any of the episode's descriptions, either on SoundCloud or uh, just however they get it. In the description, there's a Bitcoin address for that. And I've got like three, two or three donations this year. Um, that's not why I'm doing it, but it is extremely appreciated and may encourage me to go uh, longer than one year if I get enough. Um, but that's how they could go about that. And it, honestly, I thought you guys should do some kind of digest for a long time, too. But yep. I was never, never uh, adamant about it. And then I heard Mark, he was on the convention, a convention media panel, and he mentioned how he wishes someone would do that. He said someone with free time who has the right equipment. And I'm like, yeah, somebody really should do that. And when he was done with it, I said, wait a second. I have a job <laughs> where I can just listen to it. And I have I have uh, some uh, super-powered Adobe audition and premiere, all sorts of crap that I don't know how to use. And I'm like, and I have 
the equipment to do this, I, I guess I should do this. And so I set it up as a, as a New Year's resolution for myself to do it. And so awesome. far, everything's been working out pretty good. It always feels good to meet goals that we set for ourselves. I'm wondering, now that you're at the halfway point, how do you feel is it going? Are you losing steam or are you um, starting to gain momentum? No, uh, you know, it's it's been going really well. I mean, s- some weeks are more difficult than others, uh, just time-wise. But mm. in general, it's it's been going fairly smoothly. And a lot of what went into it was out the beginning, coming up with how I wanted to format it and getting a feel for how to fit everything together the way I wanted. And after that, it's been pretty much good. Now, this next hot, this next uh, digest might suck because there were so many good interviews on the Saturday episode mm-hmm. that it was really hard for me to decide what to clip and what's going to make it into the next uh, week's digest, but uh, it'll all work out. You mentioned donations, which is one form of feedback, but I'm curious if you've gotten any other kind of feedback. I've Just a few comments here and there, you know, saying, hey, I, I love the podcast, and I've been grateful that a lot of the comments have been, oh, this is a great way for me to share with my friends. I, really, I'm doing it for... Uh, well, three reasons. One is I wanted to make a way for people who don't have the time to listen to Free Talk Live, you know, they're they're very busy, family, work, whatever, to be able to listen to a bunch of Free Talk Live. Yeah. Another one was hopefully uh, Ian and Daryl are being able to use it at least in some way, or maybe not yet, to help promote the the uh, show giving it to program directors who don't have time to listen to whole weeks worth of shows to get a a taste of what they might be putting on their airwaves onto their airwaves and i thought well this would be a good way for them to do that and uh a good way to share with your family and friends because i've had friends in the past where i'm like you you should listen to free talk life it's a little different you should give it a week to get a real taste of it and now i can just direct them to the digest so when i hear people say hey this is great i gave it you know gave the digest to some friends to listen to and you know that's that's why i'm doing it it's you know form activism it is yeah it absolutely is activism and i again thank you for doing it i know you want to talk about the police so stand by we're going to bring you back for that discussion up next benjamin bartholomew and his brother were arrested in california uh, when doing a tax protest actually with a large taxes equals theft sign on the side of the road and the police, uh, they stopped them, they, uh, they arrested them for wearing masks in that particular case, and they recorded most all of the, uh, the interaction. More coming up here in moments. Recording the police, you're welcome to share your experience or bring up anything. We'll talk about Aereo on the way as well. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hoodia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Are you a sneezer? If you're not, can you get close to one? I don't literally mean someone sneezing. Sneezer, as defined by marketing guru Seth Godin, is an opinion leader. When a sneezer mentions something, other people catch what Godin calls the idea virus. Seth Godin says some people are more likely to tell their friends about a great new idea. So identifying and courting sneezers is a key success factor for idea merchants. His book, Unleashing the Idea Virus, is the most downloaded ebook in history, and you can download the whole book free. That's how he's making his idea contagious. Click tips 
tricks, and other stuff to help you cut through the clutter at www.survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. If you're doing something very interesting, or you have a reputation for doing something very interesting, yeah, then you become more interesting to track. I love how dramatic you are. Then you become... Oh, my. Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay, I worked in uh, uh, <laughs> a psychotropic medic... Uh, try, try, psychotropic substances when I was working for the CIA. Yeah. So you were testing, what, LSD or that sort of thing, or what? <laughs> uh, you think I'm going to stay on the air? You've already told us you work for the CIA. <laughs> you couldn't possibly find out who I am. <laughs> the way that you speak and, and your tone of voice, you sound like Cruella DeVille. I just, <laughs> I've noticed it from the moment you got on the phone. I uh, even look like her. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at Facebook.LRN.FM. That's Facebook.LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. All you have to do is dial toll-free. Our number is brought to you by ProXPN. It's 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. ProXPN can help you protect your privacy online. It's a global virtual private network, and they encrypt your data. So whatever it is that's going to leave your computer before it leaves your Internet port, whether it's your Wi-Fi or your wired uh, Internet port, it is encrypted by ProXPN software. You download the software at ProXPN.com slash FTL. And you can go and get it right now for free for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices, plus Linux users. Uh, there's a little bit of a different setup, but it's actually pretty simple. And so you can get this thing working uh, pretty much regardless of whatever operating system you're using. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Get it set up. Get started. It only takes a few moments. And you'll be encrypted. Uh, which is awesome, meaning your internet service provider can't snoop on you anymore. They can't know what you're doing. They're probably logging right now every website that you visit, every search term that you enter, in some cases keeping those logs for up to five years. So you can stop that from happening by going to proxpn.com slash FTL, grab their software and get started. And you can start with their free account, and that's fine, but... Free accounts are limited on bandwidth, and there's a few other limitations. When you go to their premium account, you can get it for 5 bucks a month with a code I'll give you in just a moment. But when you get their premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world to which you can connect, as well as the ability to privately torrent. Very cool features with Pro XPN, and there's a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee. Plus, they don't keep records of your online surfing habits. So, proxpn.com slash FTL. When you're ready for the premium package, upgrade with code FTL20. That's promo code FTL20. It saves you 20% off of the price of their premium account for the lifetime of the account. And you can order monthly or annually as well. If you go with the annual plan, that's what breaks that price down with our code FTL20 to 5 bucks a month at proxpn.com slash FTL. Coming up, we'll talk about Aereo. What is it? Derek J's never heard. Well, uh, maybe maybe many of you have not heard either because now they may be going out of business as a result of the Supreme Court decision that just came down. 
Uh, but first, we continue with Benjamin Bartholomew, one of the activists out in California who cares about freedom. And I was actually uh, surprised to not see a member of the Bartholomew family at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, Benjamin. Uh, you, uh, Your parents came out to the Liberty Forum earlier this year. And uh, are you guys gearing up for a move? What? Uh, why'd you miss it? Uh, well, we're hoping to move. Who knows when my dad keeps not retiring, mm. uh, <laughs> but he's supposed to retire in this fall. So Got it. Uh, hopefully we'll just move. I, I don't need the Porcupine Freedom Festival to be convinced to move to, to move out there. Good point. Um, and so not that it's a waste of money, but why spend all that money when I could save it for the move? I feel the same uh, exact way. Yeah. I knew I wanted to come to New Hampshire. I knew I wanted to be around other liberty-minded people and that there would be nowhere else I'd want to be besides that. So I did the same exact thing. I never visited New Hampshire prior to moving. I didn't see any point in putting any money towards visiting New Hampshire. I'd rather just spend it on a moving truck or the gas it takes to get here. And so that's exactly what I did. But I, I don't know. You know, It'd be interesting to break down the membership of the Free State Project and see how many Many are like testing the waters kind of people like, well, well we want to know for sure. And how many others are just already convinced without even having visited uh, New Hampshire? I wonder what that breakdown is. What, what was your, uh, Derek J., did you, did you visit I did not here? visit. I just moved. And I stayed in Keene for a week before contacting anyone because mm -hmm. I wanted to find out if I actually wanted to be here. To feel so, it out. Yeah, yeah, I felt it out. I was listening to Free Talk Live from... My room, uh, I was renting a room that from someone I found on Craigslist. I went looking for jobs to see if I could get a job. Mm -hmm. you no, know, once I was able to land jobs, call into Free Talk Live, and uh, meet some other activists, I felt right at home. Well, awesome. We'll look forward to uh, seeing you get up here. Now, what did you want to uh, say to us, Benjamin, about the recording the police issue? Well, mostly you guys hit it. If people are going to record, they should use a streaming app if they can. Mm -hmm. Bambuser, Livestream, whatever it is, because... You don't know what's going to happen with your phone during that police en that encounter with the armed bureaucrats. Uh, with my brother and I, it was taken, and we didn't get our we didn't get them back till uh, three or four months after the trial mm. had ended. And that uh, was that what we, a we, year uh, after your incident. That was a year. We didn't have a trial till almost exactly a year, like eleven months and two weeks or something like now, that. Now you guys did have video. Of, this was when you were uh, arrested for holding signs with masks on on the side of the road, basically, and uh, you did have video up of that incident. How did that get out? Well, <clears throat> because we were live streaming, uh -huh. and this is kind of what I wanted to get to. Even though it eventually didn't help us with our court trial at all, because uh, people just. Uh, love to you should do what the cops tell you well um, oh, if, but before you go on illegal. The, there was actually interviews with the jurors the media interviewed the jury members after they convicted you uh where the jury members you know one or two of them actually admitted that yeah well you know we shouldn't have convicted them based on the law but they should have done what the police told them to do which was you know remove the masks immediately and obey these illegal orders because well the police said you should do it so you should do it even right. though it wasn't illegal for you not to do it that essentially was the position of at least one of the jurors was it not absolutely um and the other ones it's crazy even if they didn't exactly agree with that they all voted to convict so they, sure they must have agreed to a certain degree um but so here's where uh, the live streaming can come in handy uh our parents came and picked us up from the jail and they took us out to pizza uh, that's not nor I don't think that's normal. Um, mm. but, uh, so no, it's we're typical, telling... it's typical to go out to eat after you get out of jail. I think that's kind of a common <laughs> thing. Uh, so we're, so, uh, we're explaining to our parents what happened and they're going, okay, sure. But I know in the back of their heads, they were like, yeah, but you're leaving something out or you're exaggerating something or it's not going this. It didn't go exactly as you said it. Mm -hmm. But when we got home, even though we didn't have uh, our cell phones, the video was already on the internet because nice. of the streaming apps. So then they got to watch it, and they were kind of floored by, oh my gosh, it is exactly what you said it was going to be. Um, also, um, both my brother and I tried to record using Quick, uh, but my phone didn't work, so it's good to have another person there totally. also trying to record. And we had a, uh old-style camera set up on a tripod kind of just recording the whole scene that the that was confiscated and we didn't get back again for a year and three months or whatever wow um but that was good too to have that even it wasn't another person recording from a distance but 
it provided a different angle and it, it, it took what was said in the police reports and it completely changed it because it went from a, hmm. uh, one of the officers saying that I had gotten his face and it's clear on the video that I am up against a chain link fence and that right before, <laughs> at one point, he steps into me, puts his finger in my face and says, let's get one thing straight. I'm not threatening you. <laughs> and that's, and you can see it from that other angle. So it's you should daisy chain. If you can't daisy chain, set up another camera from a different angle. If yes. you can, have multiple devices. Have multiple going. devices, preferably run by multiple people, preferably as many streaming as possible. Um, I know that when Derek J was being attacked uh, on his bicycle a couple of years ago by Officer Fenton Moore here in Keene, uh, knocked off of his bike, the officer stuck an asp between the spokes of the wheels and literally eject ejected Derek from his bicycle and then proceeded to attack him on the ground, hitting him, I believe, was it twice? Yeah, with his fist. Um, there, we knew that something was going on. It actually happened right down the street from the studio here, and we could hear the siren, this piercingly loud siren. And so I grabbed my camera and ran outside. And as I'm running, I'm, you know, popping the side open, turning it on, you know, getting it ready to record. And oh, crap, this memory card needs to be formatted. So I'm trying to, you know, as I'm running, I'm trying to format the memory card and get to the point where I can actually record the video luckily i wasn't the only person running up on the scene so i didn't start recording until i had actually arrived and managed to finally get this thing set up to record but luckily cecilia was there uh, from ladies and keen and she had started recording as soon as she walked out the front door and so i wasn't the only one and so therefore my technical failure in that case wasn't a huge hit uh, to uh, to that scene. Now I'm curious, Benjamin. I remember when your video came out of you guys getting arrested and harassed by the police. Have you considered making a more kind of comprehensive video that encom encompasses all the different angles you have and also sort of tells the whole story, including what happened with the jury trial? I realize that's a big project, but I thought it was a really amazing situation. No, uh, you know, and I, I've had I've had officers in the past encounters with them, and including one where they accused my camera of being a gun. Um, so stand by Benjamin we can come back here in moments it's free talk live I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Global warming purports rising CO2 levels while evolution describes mutated DNA. The fraudulent sciences describe effects of iron poisoning and copper depletion. As generations are iron poisoned and copper deprived, the DNA has mutated and weakened as blood types A, B, and O. These blood types and rhesus factor are falsely used as evidence of evolution. Humans were created solely with blood type A, B negative. Fraudulent science purports mutated DNA coupled with rising CO2 levels in blood are causing humans to go into extinction. In truth, humans are being methodically exterminated by iron poisoning and copper depletion. Blood type AB is on the Shroud of Turin and matches the healthy population. They claim this is evidence. They are from the line of Christ and thus are his Christ. They are from the lines that were disinherited 2,000 years ago and now they claim to be his Christ. For further information, go to unveilingthem.com. That is U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G-them.com. Unveilingthem.com. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money. 
my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show. Username is lrn.fm. Send a contact request first. It will be approved. Takes us probably no more than a segment or two to get to the approval. And then after that point, it'll be easy for you to call us on Skype and talk about anything that happens to be on your mind with you in the studio this evening. It's Ian and Derek J. And don't forget to check out Derek J's blog, DerekJ.me. Yes, that's the one. And also, you're now posting raw videos. Is yes. That, that's linked to from your blog site, correct? Yes. There are links to everything that I do at DerekJ.me. In fact, I was broadcasting the Angel Clark show earlier today, Excellent. and I did it uh, copied from DerekJ.me. So if people wanted to see the live show and interact with other listeners, they could have done that right from the website. Now, we're talking with uh, Benjamin Bartholomew. He is an activist from California who was convicted by a jury of his so-called peers and you know i'm gonna have to ask benjamin to refresh us on what exactly the charges were in that case what what was it disorderly conduct resisting arrest what did they hit you with i know there was some sort of mask charge they ended up dropping it it depends uh originally the uh they charged us or were going to charge us with defacing public property because we (laughs) had a sign in front of uh the chain link fence ridiculous and they were going to charge us with uh, and I, I, I wish I remember. I used to know the charge off the top of my head, but it was basically wearing a mask in public. The mm-hmm. problem was, and this was really strange too about the incident. I told the officer uh, to go ahead and cite me the law. It says because I looked this stuff up before we went, we'd go places, and he's trying to say it's illegal to wear a mask. And I said, well, what's the law? And he came back, and he quotes the law, and it specifically says. It is illegal to wear a mask or fake uh, whiskers, like a false beard, mm-hmm. uh, for the purposes of com- uh, of concealing your identity while committing a crime. Ah. And so his position was, we were wearing the masks in order to conceal our identity while committing the crime of holding a sign. <laughs> That was defacing public property. Defacing public property, which, of course, has to do with actually changing some sort of property by, say, spray painting it, for instance. Uh, You had had a sign that you had, at most, zip-tied to the side of, uh, of, you know, like a chain-link fence, correct? We didn't even go that far. We used these things called cable cuffs. They're like little plastic things that just snap closed and, you know, and just hold it there. And we used that to hold up the sign because it was so freaking heavy the way we had built this giant sign and you know you could take it down within 15 seconds if you wanted it wasn't 
and so leave nothing no had been damaged, murder. nothing and had been we, marred, nothing had been defaced. So wait, what was the actual charge? So it wasn't defacing so public property. Th- well, that was what it was originally. And oh, so we the, go into court several months later, and the uh, assistant DA decides to drop the sign charge because he doesn't want it to be about uh, free speech, and uh-huh. obviously, because it's crazy. And he says he wants he, he pulls us aside and says, look, I'll drop that other charge. All you got to do is plead gil- guilty to a violation level littering charge. And we mm-hmm. were like, what? But we didn't litter that. What does that have to do with anything? And he goes, you know, uh, we won't seek any penalty. Just say you just say you drop something. And we're like, well, we're not going to lie. And he goes, no, <laughs> no, just say you. Just say something fell out of your pocket. And we're like, but nothing fell out of our pockets. And he's like, yeah, just like a paperclip or something. And you guys are like Boy Scouts or whatever. You're Eagle Scouts or one of my, you at least, right? My brother is an Eagle Scout. I am a Life Scout. I, I, I should have pressed harder, but I was uh, to get my Eagle Scout. I did everything, but just didn't finish it up because... I was lazy and a teenager. I mean, this guy, this bureaucrat, this prosecutor is 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 asking an Eagle Scout and a Life Scout, you know, people who have sworn an oath over and over again, you know, on my honor, I'll do my best to do my duty to this and that, God of my country, whatever it was. I never memorized it. I couldn't stand the Boy Scouts growing <laughs> up. But uh, I have a lot of respect for people who got to the point of, you know, Eagle Scout. That's amazing. It's an amazing accomplishment. Well, and it was a fun club to be in. Yeah, and uh, you know, here's this guy talking to these Eagle Scout types and trying to get them to tell a lie just to take a you know take a plea deal. It's crazy. Yeah, make the whole thing just go away. And we're like, but we're not gonna lie. Right. He could make well, it go away by dropping all the charges, but he wants a conviction. He could have. So he goes, well, if you don't, you know, you might come back and things could be worse for you. So the next time we go back to court. The mask charges drop. So now all the charges are dropped, except he's now added resisting arrest. And 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 that's what we ended up uh, being convicted of. Nothing else. I so, Benjamin, he, he wasn't saying things could be worse for you because, like, the judge won't take it easy on you because you're, you know, using his system. He was saying things would be worse for you because I personally, as a prosecutor, am going to make Come them worse for you. Yeah. Right, right. And—, and not in the court, but outside of the court. I don't remember at what point this happened, but he even brought up how this all comes down to contempt of cop. And I was blown away when he used those words, it not prompted or anything. He just was, you know, spitting with our attorney or whatever. And he uses the term, well, this is all just contempt of cop. Anyway. It's not like so they're not don't. familiar with this situation. Mm-hmm. They know the game. Right. And and I'm like, you you know what's going on and, and that you're still going forward this. And I my mind was blown at that point. Um, oh, and that was only the beginning of the mind blowing experience. I mean, the whole jury trial oh. where they essentially could not convict you on the evidence uh, in the case. They the jury convicted you because they didn't like that you didn't do what you were told, even though it wasn't illegal to not do what you were told, which you were told take off your masks, right? It was it was a, like a it was like jury nullification, but only in reverse. Yeah. Um, I, right, I think they forced the a conviction when the law Kafka itself novel. didn't apply. It's cr- I, it was so bizarre. And then they they proudly made statements to the media about why they convicted you as well. That, that's why I asked you I'm earlier. And maybe for the whole experience, though, everything we learned, because I know when we first got into it, I had been watching stuff out of uh, Keen and Cop Block, mm-hmm. and you guys is experiencing going, oh, they're they're clearly exaggerating you know (laughs) you know all that kind of stuff and then i'm going through this we're going through the whole thing and i'm like no no everything they said was true no exaggeration (laughs) necessary no right it's not necessary you know there's no need to make anything up or exaggerate anything because it's all true the reality is already so over the top ridiculous i mean just today in Keene, new hampshire activists were on the front page of the newspaper again over the robin hood chalking thing there was an article kind of like an overview of some of the media that we've been generating uh here in Keene as a result of this stuff and you know the government can't make themselves look much 
worse. They've got a picture of one of the government employees washing chalk off of uh, Central Square. So it's not just the local citizenry who's upset. The government employees themselves are being paid to go and wash chalk off of, uh, of government sidewalks. It's just absurdity to the absolute maximum. And all we have to do is point a video camera and write some blog posts to, to bring this home to people. So I want to come back around to the question I'd asked you before, Benjamin. Maybe I miscommunicated it or I misunderstood your answer. What I was asking is, would you consider, now that you have all the footage, because you had to, your cameras were confiscated, only a couple of videos got out to, through streaming, so you've got all the footage, would you consider making sort of an overview, as Derek and I were talking about it during the break, you know, a five-minute video telling your story and, you know, all the way from beginning of the arrest through the end at the court and maybe your decision ultimately to move to, to the Free State Project, you know, I, kind of I, tell, telling that story. Maybe when we're actually getting ready to move, I'll use I'll make a video and point to that as a prime example. Um, but just in general, I, I, there's nothing left, for, at least in my opinion, to really say about the issue. Uh, like I'm, I'm not trying to promote it. I, I, I hate that it's become like my thing or whatever. Like that's what we're known for. I mean, even though we are, and I'm, I, I, I'm not a, you know. Well, I mean, I I imagine you'll you'll be known for other things in the future, but it's certainly a noteworthy example. And I can understand wanting to, you know, put past activism behind you and move on into into other things. The reason I bring it up is, uh, you know, it's it's the reason I did Derek J's victimless crime spree uh, that we did uh, Mm -hmm. Derek J's victimless crime spree because. It's hard to tell a story in in chunks over time. It, not everybody, you know, was there necessarily when you got arrested, but they might have been paying attention when the court trial happened. And then, of course, you know, here we are. How many ever? What is it? Then three years now uh, since since that situation. Here we are, years it feels later. Feels like forever. Yeah, and you know, we're kind of I, telling the story, but there are people who are listening for the first time tonight who this is their first time hearing the story. They may be saying, "Oh, I'd like to see that video." And when they go and look for it, they're only going to find the one angle that ever existed. It would be interesting, although again, time-consuming to to create this, to create an overview video so people can see the absurdity of this if they're just coming into the story. Just something to consider. I figured I'd throw yeah. it out there for what it's worth. Go ahead. No, no. I, I think when we move, now that you're mentioning it, I do have we have lots of video of what we are doing in our activism, and maybe we'll make a short Derek J's victimless crime speech type. I would love it. I would love it. And put some quotes in there from those jurors. Those were particularly outrageous. And thanks for the call tonight, Benjamin. I appreciate hearing from you. Hour three's next. You can tell your outrageous story or bring whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. You're listening to The Liberty Beat, your daily source for liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. This is Justin Armand with your Liberty Beat for June 30th, 2014. Gold open today at $1,318, silver at $20.87, and Bitcoin is trading at $622. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoon in Austin at 4 p.m. on 1370 a.m. That's 1370 a.m. in Austin on Sunday at 4 p.m. And from My Magic Mud, an all-natural teeth whitening and strengthening remedy. Visit MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole, or pick a jar up today at Brave New Books. And now the news. Justin Armand's parenting book entitled Free Your Children, A Guide for Liberty-Loving Parents was released today by Liberty.me. Liberty.me is a digital city where you can connect with other liberty lovers and read through an extensive library. They also offer free courses by heavy hitters in the liberty community. Justin Armand and his wife, Jessica, will be doing a presentation on some of the topics in this book, plus a live Q&A. Visit liberty.me for more information. According to a report by the New York Post, hundreds of Chinese teens are entering the U.S. through parts of Central America and Cuba, many making their way to New York City, where they are then farmed out across the country to work for Chinese restaurants. An immigration lawyer who speaks Mandarin said, Many fly from Beijing to Guatemala, where they board buses to the border. Smugglers hide one boy in a coffin, while another girl hid in a Guatemalan tour bus bathroom that was marked out of order. Those coming across the border from Cuba often hide under the floorboards of boats. On Friday, the Pennsylvania State Senate Committee unanimously approved a bill that would legalize the use of medical marijuana for patients suffering from serious medical conditions. If passed, the bill would allow qualified patients to obtain medical marijuana from a limited number of licensed dispensaries throughout the state. Smoking would not be permitted, but patients could consume marijuana in edible form or through vaporization of the plant. A March 2014 poll showed that 85% of Pennsylvania voters support medical marijuana. Currently, 22 states and the District of Columbia have passed medical marijuana laws, with New York expected to become the 23rd state pending the governor's signature. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, now with two locations at 500 East Bend White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. And from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. You're listening to The Liberty Beat for June 30th, 2014. Be sure to check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. On Thursday, the Austin City Council voted unanimously to approve a $1 billion bond proposal to move forward with an urban rail. Council members have until August to determine what could be included in the bond proposal. Right now, the plan calls for a 9.5-mile urban rail route running from Austin Community College through the University of Texas, the New Dell Medical School, and across the lake over Riverside Drive, ending at Grove Boulevard. Several grassroots organizations that were initially for the measure plan to show up and encourage the city council to vote against the measure because they believe federal funds intended to help pay for the plan aren't there yet. Texans for Accountable Government has formed a transportation committee to address these issues. Tom Homan, the official overseeing Immigration and Customs Enforcement, said that it will take years for the unaccompanied minors streaming across the border to appear before an immigration judge. Homan added that there's a lack of immigration judges, meaning some of the hearings could take up to five years, making it unlikely that any of the migrants will be deported. Officials found after reviewing records that 87% of migrant children that arrived in the U.S. over the last five years are still in immigration proceedings. The National Park Service has announced a ban on unmanned aerial vehicles or drones for all of America's 401 national parks and memorials. Park Service Director Jonathan B. Jarvis said the order was based on drone operators harassing visitors and wildlife. 
Jarvis called for further study of drone use and will allow park managers to use drones for research and search and rescue missions. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Accountable Authority, now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct. Online at accountableauthority.com. A report on obesity rates released this week by the CDC confirmed that millions of courageous Americans continue to overcome the media's persistent pressure to be thin. Researchers told reporters that while the vast majority of film and television continues to portray thin, in-shape people, over 30% of Americans remain resolved in their effort to stand up to idealized images of men and women. Every day, people are inundated with unvarying images of slim men and women, but millions of heroic Americans continue doing their best every day to maintain BMIs 35 or higher. These people aren't afraid to fly in the face popular culture deems acceptable and bravely eat and drink whatever they want, whenever they want. In other news, the nation's single men announce a plan to change their bedsheets by 2019. A woman who left the room crying earlier expects to jump back into the party just like that. And a courtroom artist is clearly infatuated with the bailiff. This two and a half minute long session of immersion therapy is finally complete. Your crippling fear of watching video news recaps should no longer be a problem. For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free here, 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number as we launch into the third hour of the program with you tonight. It's Ian. And Derek J. Mark is sick, by the way. I didn't mention that earlier. He's off tonight. Aww. So I've been having a lot of fun with you, Derek J. It's yeah, great. me too. Thanks. Great to have you here. We've been talking off and on, for those of you just tuning in, uh, tonight about the police and recording the police being a really important thing to do. And earlier had a discussion about how... Recording the police can change a situation for the better, and then I believe that overall it tends to change the situation for the better, although you can certainly find instances where, uh, and photography is not a crime.com is one of those websites that shows plenty of instances where the police behave very poorly uh, when they're placed on camera. So it's not a foolproof system to record the police. They can aggress against you, and they can aggress against you and kidnap you and take your cameras and destroy your equipment with relative impunity, even if they ultimately do get held responsible, as they were in my case in Palmer, Massachusetts, where I was arrested for recording video in a town hall. The officers themselves are very rarely rarely held responsible. It's the taxpayers who shell out the cash in those settlements. In that case, was your video camera stolen? In that case, actually, I managed to get the camera back. Uh, I had go have good rapport with the police chief at the Palmer Police Department. You know, even though he arrested me, we at least get along and can have a conversation. Unlike the Such chief, such a weird thing to say. Yeah, we get along, even though he arrested me. I mean, how do you? say that some people are more gentlemanly than others in the policing profession i mean obviously arresting someone is not a nice gentlemanly thing to do in general uh kidnapping an innocent person who's not harmed anyone is a terrible thing to do but at least when they're doing it some people can be less violent and you know more nice yeah. than they otherwise would yeah. be there so. are degrees you know, the guy in uh, Palmer let me take my water bottle in the holding cell with me. He didn't have to do that, but he let me do that. And I appreciated being able to have water while in the holding cell and not have to drink out of the sink, uh, which, you the, know, wasn't... The toilet sink. Yeah, yeah, yeah which great. wasn't really working at all. A lot of times when you're in a holding cell, uh, th I, at least I've been in this situation before, they, for whatever reason, turn the water pressure way down so the uh, the water from the, the spout barely even... It doesn't even, like, eject above the spout. You have to you French have kiss to the toilet. The, yeah, you'd have to touch this thing in order to drink. So, you know, I, I was grateful to have a bottle yeah. of water in there. The little things start to matter uh, yeah. when you're in situations like that. But anyway, I had good rapport with the guy, and um, I so he didn't So he didn't take your camera? When you were you were able to ask for it back, and he, he gave it to you. I, I got it back after I allowed him to copy the footage from the SD card, which, again, fine with me. You know, you're going to use it in the trial, whatever. I just want my equipment back. Because that's one of my biggest concerns with filming the police is that they're going to take my camera. Yeah. And that's why live streaming is so important because, you know, like Benjamin said, by the time he got home after jail, the video was already online. He it, didn't have to do anything more. In the case of William Kostrick in the Weir, New Hampshire Police Department, or Weir, New Hampshire Police Department, they did take take his camera and he did not get it back for a number of years in fact i don't believe they've ever returned it to him i think he's tried to get it back like the judge ordered them to return it and something you know some sort of legal mumbo jumbo got involved i'd have to talk to to william to get the latest on the story but 
he had to get a new camera eventually. He did not get it back in any decent amount of time, not even months. It was literally years before he even had the order from the judge for the department to return the camera. Yeah, that's so weird. So that's another pro tip. If you're going to do activism, make sure your equipment isn't too expensive because you might lose it. True. Yeah, it is nice to have a disposable camera, but on the other hand, disposable cameras tend to not be very good quality cameras. So hopefully finding a balance between yeah. you know not too crappy, but yet... Not too expensive. Yeah, I, I expect at any time when I'm filming the police that they may take my camera and it's gone forever. So Absolutely something true. Something to consider. So, uh, you know, I actually had a – Mark, I think, is is posting some stuff on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter while he is at home sick. Aww. And he posted what is a related story – or someone, someone posted this to our Facebook group. We have a few people who post there. But uh, what is a related story to this conversation we've been having where uh, apparently it was just posted today at photographyisnotacrime.com, Carlos Miller's website – Headline, California cop refuses to take report because man insisted on video recording the conversation. Cool. Now, I've got the clip. I was actually just happened to jump. It's an eight minute long thing. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I was just jumping around during the news break to see if I could find the actual relevant portion. And I believe I have pulled that up here. I was on the phone with um, 911 dispatch, whoever, and was saying a lot of things that were false. And so I was recording to defend myself. So there's a scene here. I don't know what's going on. There's some kind of disagreement between two people, and a police officer has come out. The man with the video camera is one of the disputants. He's one of the people in this dispute. And uh, the police officer asks him, as you can kind of hear there, he's a little soft-spoken. He says, why are you you, filming me? Right. Why are you recording me? First he asks him why he's recording. Then he asks him why he's recording him, which is what he just did. Because you're part of this. And I am allowed to to record the police. You're right. So. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So thank you. Um, so anyway, um, well, I, I don't, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I'll just take the other side of the story. It's, it's okay. Really? Yeah, because I'm not going to have you record me. I, I didn't do anything. You're going to record me and accuse me of, of being a part of this. I'm here to help you. No, 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 no. You're <laughs> a part of <laughs> Whoa! Does he sound like he's being very helpful? No. It sounds like the a police officer admitted that it's okay for the man to record him, mm-hmm. but... He doesn't like it, and so he's not going to help him. And, of That's course, exactly what he Ian, did. he doesn't have to help him. Uh, the law has several times, I think, even gone to all the way to the Supreme Court where the police have no obligation to protect. Or, in uh, you know, do anything. We know they have no obligation to protect you, no. but they it, don't have to do anything. They don't have to show up. In this case, they don't have to take a report. They no. don't have to listen to you. They don't have to do anything. I think the example given in that case was a police officer on the subway, a man being murdered in the same train car. The cop can just move over to the next train car mm-hmm. and just say nothing. Well, yeah, and they've got full discretion in most cases, although some would argue that in certain jurisdictions they have an obligation to act on a felony that's being committed, but I don't know if that's a... That that tr- uh, that claim is true, or yeah. not. and uh, and if they don't if they don't act, then you know what what can you do about it? You can't do anything. This guy can complain about this officer not listening to him. It, oh well, I'm just going to walk over there, take their statement, get the other side of the story from the people who aren't recording me, and screw you. I'm just going to walk away from you. It's weird because the guy with the video camera is showing with his actions that he cares about getting an objective record mm-hmm. of what's going on in the world around him. The guy who's not recording, he may value the truth and the accuracy, keeping an objective record of the world around him, but he's not showing it with his actions. And the officer is clearly taking the side of the guy who is less accountable in this instance. I mean, you see two people, one with a video camera, you're a cop investigating what happened. Wouldn't you think you'd want to go to the guy with the camera, say, hey, rewind that tape for me. Let's let's investigate this. No, I just want to stay away from this camera guy. California cop uh, responding to a call about a fender bender refused to take a man's side of the story because the man insisted on video recording the conversation, according to Carlos Miller. Uh, in his summary of the story, Simi Valley police officer Corey Baker told the man identified as Jeff Knapp in the video that he had every right to record him, but he as a cop has every right not to take the report unless Knapp turned the camera off. Aww. In other words, he needed as much room to manipulate the truth without the annoying presence of a camera to hold him accountable. We should expect more from a cop who has led the department in making DUI arrests during the past two years. After all, it was only last year that a Utah state trooper was fired after leading the department of DUI arrests when evidence emerged indicating she falsified many of those cases. So transparency is key, especially from a cop who receives more than $174,000 in pay and benefits to serve the community. This cop, the one, you know, Carlos did some digging. This cop receives more than $174,000 per year. 
I'm sure he's worth it. You know, the, the people, they get their money's worth. This man, uh, he'll probably be promoted. You know, the type of people who raise rise up the ranks in, in police outfits tend to be the ones who get the most DUI arrests like this guy did, mm-hmm. uh, have the least accountability because, you know, with less accountability comes more room for lying about how great you are. So <laughs> he gets the promotion. A similar incident took place in Pennsylvania last year where a Lancaster police officer claimed departmental policy forbade him from taking an accident report while on camera, which turned out to be a lie and then forced the department to issue a public apology. So whether anything like that will happen in this case, I don't <sighs> know. You know, this sort of makes me... Think surreptitious recording is the way to go, mm-hmm. and I tend to be more for like accountability. Hey, on both ends, I'm recording you, and I want you to know that. Yeah. But when stuff like this happens, I think it's better to have two cameras recording. Turn one where you one say, off. "Hey, I'm recording you," and then turn it off. Then you've and got let the recording. Them presume they are no longer being recorded. That's right. right? Uh, so we'll come back with more here in moments because in some states, like unfortunately New Hampshire, it's a what's called a two-party consent. So people have to know they're being recorded. Uh, even then, you probably still would get charged with wiretapping. Whether or not you'd win, maybe you'd have a chance. More coming up. Free talk live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. All you have to do is dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE is the number. That's brought to you by ProXPN. You can join us online over at freetalklive.com and get interactive in a variety of ways. As our caller earlier mentioned, he submitted a story to our website. You can submit there to the front page. It can get voted on, vote up what you like, vote down if you don't like something, if you uh, if you want, you can get interactive over at freetalklive.com. All the content you see there was created by listeners like you. So it wouldn't be there if it weren't for listeners like you taking the time to put it there. So thank you for that. And go and get interactive. It's a, it's a Reddit, uh, basically it's a Reddit-operated site. Our site is larger than, than that, but it, the main page is essentially a Reddit sub, a subreddit for Free Talk Live that we have integrated right into the website. So go and check that out at freetalklive.com. Now, when we manage to create robots that can look and act like humans, that is and Androids. Will they be our slaves, our masters, or our partners in exploration and prosperity? Quantum Vibe, the science fiction adventure webcomic, suggests the answer is all of the above. As our heroes continue their epic mission to open a vast new frontier, they encounter an android slave culture on terraformed and corporatized Mars, and later join forces with a liberated android friend to avert a deadly disaster in the freewheeling asteroid belt. Quantum Vibe, Volume 2. Murphy collects these adventures in a 161 full-color page printed volume and is available from Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and BigHeadPress.com. So check out Quantum Vibe Volume 2. Of course, you can go to QuantumVibe.com. You can read it online there and then get yourself a copy or buy one as a gift. Again, go through uh, Amazon. You can shop at shop.freetalklive.com and look for Quantum Vibe or any other great Big Head Press uh, publications at yeah, shop.freetalklive.com and bigheadpress.com. Let's go to Chris in Kentucky. Uh, you're on Free Talk Live, and I also want to talk about Aereo coming up here in a moment. Chris, you're on the air. Hey, guys. Uh, this is Chris. I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about my uh, very first trip to Forkfest last week. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I mean, I, I you know, a year ago, never heard of Porkfest. Uh, just, you know, just starting to figure things out a little bit and uh, shortly after that heard about it just kind of planted a seed in my head and um you know a few months later when i saw the, the dates announced i'm like yeah it'll work i think i can make that and you know then i'm buying tickets and figuring out how to get up there and and you know kind of at the last minute both my kids decided they wanted to come which was awesome um and uh it was it, it was i i didn't really have expectations i kind of didn't know what to expect hmm. But it, it was just incredible. I, I mean, and, and the main reason is um, because, you know, all this stuff that I've been listening to and reading about and, and, and trying to talk to people about, I, I know after going to Pork Fest that it actually works, right? That, that when you remove, you know, aggression and coercion from the equation, everything changes, right? I mean, people that you never expect to get along get along just fine. Yeah. And, and actually not only get along, they like actually work together and, and do some really cool stuff. I mean, it's just... You know, I, I hope that that was true, and, and I'd like to think that it was true, but after going to Pork Fest, I, I know it's true. I've seen it work. I want to know what you mean by that, Chris. Like, people who normally wouldn't get along together, this was your first Pork Fest. Did you see any of that? Like, people who you thought might not get along, but they were working together? Well, I, you know, I, I made a point my, myself, actually, to kind of hang out with some of the uh, the old Expo guys a little bit, right? Kind of that little group within, within Pork Fest. Because, you know, I, I, I really was struggling with, with understanding some of their point of views, and, and, and I wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to hear where they were coming from. And, you know, I'm certainly, uh, it's not like I've, uh, they've won me over or anything like that, but it, it was really interesting because we were able to have a lot of really deep conversations, you know, uh, about a number of different things from, 
you know, the, the, the whole uh, use of force issue, uh, some of the abortion stuff, you know, I mean, some of the deeper stuff that was going on there. And it was all, you know, a, no, no ad hominems, no, you know, kind of reverting to emotion or anything like that. It was just all straight, you know, here's what I think, here's why. I can back it up seven layers with, with, with principles, and, and let's just kind of explore and unpack each of those and, and take the time. And, you know, again, it, it, neither side ever felt, um, uh, you know, again, threatened or, or even the, the, you know, the threat of, of you know, I'm going to yell at you or, I'm, you know, it has to be this way or anything like that. And, again, mm -hmm. you just remove that simple element from the equation. And uh, it just opens up all, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of interesting possibilities. That is so cool, Chris. I have to agree with you that I really appreciate the absence of ad hominem attacks and all of these uh, conversations with people who do disagree with each other, like the alt expo people like you uh, brought up or yeah. have some unconventional beliefs uh, when compared to the rest of the Porkfest attendees, but that didn't mean anyone had to fight. They just talked about their differences. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, I'm curious, how was it for the kids? Oh, the kids loved it. Uh, you know, my, my son's 13, my daughter's 15. Um, you know, my son just kind of, you know, he did the pack thing, formed a little group, and they had a tribe, and they were just running <laughs> around. And, you know, I, I, I'd throw him, like, you know, uh, uh, some uh, Bitcoin and some silver in the morning, and I wouldn't <laughs> see him until, like, midnight. And, and he did great, right? And my daughter, she kind of floated back and forth between uh, going to, you know, going to some session. Uh, you know, she was actually really interested in the uh, the abortion debate that went on, wow. um, and, uh, and 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 learned quite a bit from that. She went to the, some of the storytelling and flash fiction stuff, and you know, again, she kind of came away with a a really cool, um, uh, you know, just understanding of, of different ways to, to to learn about stuff. Now, I mean, it was it was really good for them. I mean, they they, hmm. they didn't stop talking. We drove all the way from Kentucky and oh, back, wow. so they didn't stop talking about it the whole way back. About using Bitcoin, I don't know what it's like for younger people. Uh, I prefer to use Bitcoin, but does it make a difference to the kids? Do they enjoy that? They thought it was cool. I mean, you know, they, uh, uh, you know, they, again, it was more the novelty, I think, of it because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, down here there's like two places that take Bitcoin, pay for face to face stuff. Uh, and it's both coffee shops, and neither of them drink coffee, so, you know, they just, just hadn't done it before. So I, I think they were interested in it from the novelty perspective. Again, to mm -hmm. me, it was, a, it was a gateway to be able to talk to them about, you know, what this is, right, what it is, and, and, and how it's a, a better store of value and a better medium of exchange and all those things that, uh, that pay for money is not. So, you know, it was, it was kind of a, yeah, again, a novelty and then just a gateway to have good, good chats with them about some, some important stuff. Great excuse to have a conversation, of course, with all these Bitcoin accepting vendors. You got all these QR codes. It's inevitable somebody's going to ask, "What's Bitcoin?" You know, maybe not everybody. I imagine not everybody at uh, Porkfest was real uh, versed, real well versed on Bitcoin, even though it probably is one of the largest Bitcoin accepting events uh, in the entire world. Chris, uh, are you a Free State Project participant now, or was your mind changed by that at uh, at the Porkfest? What was your, what's what's your story? So I was not. Um, you know, I, I have to say I'm, I'm really considering it now. You know, again, mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, the, again, just seeing how it can actually work. And, you know, uh, again, I, I've only been back for a day, and, and, and I already kind of miss it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the idea of being able to, 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 to just live in environments like that all the time or close to it, you know, I get that it's not exactly like that all the time, but, but closer than probably anywhere else uh, is, is really appealing. Thanks for sharing your experience, Chris, uh, and I hope we'll see you back here in New Hampshire at some point in the future. Oh, absolutely. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the call tonight. Yet another uh, rave review of the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I mean, yeah, there were some times where it was maybe a little bit harder than normal. Like there was one day where the sewage, uh, there was a sewage backup of some sort, and uh, the water pressure was virtually non-existent uh, for a number of hours. I mean, it's not without its issues i guess but overall it's an amazing experience you're in the woods with uh, hundreds if not thousands of wonderful liberty oriented people and there's just nothing like it anywhere unfortunately we'd love for this to be all over the world but not at this time toll free number is 855 450 free if you want an experience like that it only happens in new hampshire and you can have it to some extent all year long just make the move here go to freestateproject.org we'll continue with more free talk live in moments this is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX 
That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on to join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, here to take your calls about anything you want to discuss. You have to make it, though. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Or just sit back, and Derek J. and I will take you through and talk about things that we think are cool and interesting and outrageous or upsetting or whatever. Uh, so, And you can also join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Hey, looking to get Bitcoin? Maybe you've heard all the buzz about Bitcoin. Maybe you were at Porkfest and you thought, oh, man, I didn't... I don't have Bitcoin yet. What am I missing out on here? Look at all these products, services. People are doing things. Bitcoin is happening. It is worth around $600 per Bitcoin at the moment. This is an amazing technology. It's a decentralized currency. It's also a fin- it's also its own financial uh, network as well. And it's taking money out of the hands of the banks, taking money out of the hands of governments, and putting it into your hands. And that power shift is 
so significant it can't be uh, it can't be stated well enough it, to to make it clear it can't be uh, i guess overstated this is a big deal because for a long time you know they uh, was it Rothschild Baron von Rothschild who uh, made some sort of statement about he who controls the money controls everything or something yeah something who like really knows yeah. but what i know is i don't have the the power to control what happens to the dollar but i i do have more control over what happens to my bitcoins Yep, and uh, you can get Bitcoins by going to ExpressCoin. It's the best choice for buying Bitcoins. And now Dogecoin, more easy, so fast, much legal, wow, inexpensive. You know, I joke, joked about Dogecoin being, you know, yet another altcoin you can't spend on anything. That wasn't true at Porkfest. You could actually buy food with Dogecoin. I did Porkfest. it. Yep, I, I bought a, a water bottle. How did bottle. you do that? Do they have Bit Dogecoin wallets that okay. you can use? I have an app right on my phone. Wow. So it works just like Bitcoin. It was very easy to spend. So you ate your Dogecoin. I did. That's awesome. Uh, and you can get Dogecoin and Bitcoin, and they're going to get, be adding more uh, coins as well at ExpressCoin, as I understand it. ExpressCoin.com. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer, and also now cash via cash deposit at uh, shared branching-based credit unions. Cool. So another option on the table for you at ExpressCoin.com. Plus, you can do it from your smartphone by downloading their app at ExpressCoin.com. Uh, we'll continue here. Our toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Aereo, the decision has come down from the Supreme Court, and unfortunately it is not in Aereo's favor. Uh, there's an article over at Jeffrey Tucker's website, liberty.me, by Jeffrey Tucker himself. In fact, rumor has it he might be coming back on the show this week, as apparently he's hanging out in New Hampshire for a few days. Cool! So um, I'm going to read his summary here of the piece. It's actually a much longer piece over at TechCrunch, which I think is very good, but we're not going to have time for that. How ridiculously backward can the Supreme Court be, asks Jeffrey Tucker at Liberty.me, never more so than when it weighs in on technology, which it ought never be allowed to do. Today shows you all you need to know. A majority of these super-powered old-timers issued a decision that attempts to give new life to the 1950s invention called television, just as the Internet age is in the process of displacing it with something better. The decision is called U.S. Broadcasting vs. Aereo. It was decided 6-3 to three with Scalia, Thomas, and Alito dissenting. And he says it is a brilliant and blistering dissent. Aereo is, a beautifully, is the beautifully disruptive service that provides consumers with a means of streaming any television content through an internet device. It is a subscription service. It's amazing, and it points to the future. Now, Jeffrey's summary of what Aereo is isn't quite accurate there. I mean, it's kind of true, but to give you more detail. Aereo has come up with a technology that allows you to stream broadcast television to a device. Okay. So, for instance, the so, old way. In so, wait, if I want to watch something and I've got like a tablet or something with me that's connected to Wi Fi, I, if I have Aereo subscription, I can uh, watch live broadcasts on my device? Correct. Okay. Uh, Aereo charged uh, 8 to $12 per month for this service. And what they did was. Uh, and the reason they argued it was legal, because the argument from broadcasting people like the old school broadcasters, television stations, the networks, their argument was that Aereo is violating copyright law. Because the idea is when the network, let's say ABC Television, broadcasts a show. I don't know what's on ABC these days. I know Lost used to be on ABC. So, you know, when Lost is being broadcast on ABC, you're not legally allowed to capture that broadcast and rebroadcast it and charge people for that, right? Because then you're basically acting like a cable company. Mm -hmm. um, and there's regulations about being a cable company. And if you want to be a cable company, the FCC has rules to follow. Yeah, or or being like one of those outdoor movie theater type things. That would be, uh, they, they have to have special rules about uh, paying for the content that they show because anyone can drive by and see it, right? That's true, but you can't hear the content if you're just driving by, so it's oh, okay. kind of different. But uh, in this case, what Aereo was doing that was different than broadcasting, so for instance, if I were to take ABC's Lost and then retransmit it on Livestream.com, just stream the video, that's That would be a copyright illegal. violation, Yeah, right? that's yeah. a copyright violation. I'm then rebroadcasting their content without permission so um, multiple people could tune in and watch it. That's illegal. Aereo's argument was, we're not doing that. What, we're, what they were doing at Aereo was 
giving you, if let's say you signed up, Derek J, you signed up for the $8 a month service, basic package, you uh, were in Keene, New Hampshire, which actually would have qualified you to receive Boston television stations. Cool. So you wouldn't be able to receive any other stations from other markets, only Boston's stations. And so, you know, you'd only get the broadcast TV stations. You wouldn't get non-broadcast channels, HBO, Showtime, Comedy Central. All of these are cable channels, so okay. you wouldn't be able to get those. So the channel selection is limited. It's limited to what whoever's on the air. And uh, the way it works is they have m little antennas, tiny little antennas that are hooked into their network. And each antenna is associated with a customer. So what they're doing is they're allowing a customer to have a remote antenna, basically. The old way to do broadcast television reception was you had to crank up a big old tower on the side of your house. You had to get a big antenna, put it up there. You could try the rabbit ears on your set, but that always looked like garbage. I don't know if you ever remember seeing rabbit ears. I remember them, yes. I mean, did they ever work? No, unless you're like near the transmitter site. So the best way to do it was to have a crank-up tower with an antenna. And it was an expensive and time-consuming process to make that work. Now, with the Internet, they have racks, you know, server racks, with these tiny little antennas in them in the actual metro. So in Boston, they have one of these server racks there with these antennas in them. So the antennas are, they have no problem picking up city signals because they're right there in the city. So the signal's strong. They can get an HD quality signal. And then they use the internet to simply pass that video to just you. It's not being broadcast to more than one person. So does that make I sense see. as to why that shouldn't be a copyright violation? Yeah, because with the, the live stream rebroadcast, as the example you gave, anyone could go and watch That's it. Right. And it wouldn't matter what password or whatever. It, it would just be anyone. Correct. But this is a person who has a subscription to the service, and it's only that person. It's essentially you're watching, and it's like watching television, broadcast television Into remotely. your home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's, yeah, but you can carry your TV set with you. Your antenna is sitting somewhere permanent in Boston, but you can move your TV set anywhere you want. To move it that to. makes a lot of it's sense. It's brilliant technology. Yeah. Unfortunately, broadcasting the old media people, they don't like stuff like this. And you know, their argument was, "Well, we're not being, we can't make advertising and blah 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 numbers, etc. Ratings." You know, they had all kinds of arguments about why this is bad. And ultimately, the Supreme Court found in the broadcaster's favor. Uh, Ario says, Jeffrey Tucker says, just as Netflix began by broadcasting movies in a more convenient way and is now producing real content, Ario was taking that step too with regard to television. With every great innovation, there are those who cry foul play. No entrenched industry wants to be challenged, much less displaced. But that's the way the market works, and that's also what's fabulous about it. But a majority writing for the court has decided to side with the entrenched television broadcasters. Of course, the case involved copyright. Aereo, we're told, enabled consumers to watch programming that the Copyright Act reserves exclusively to those who produce the content. Reading the decision is painful. It's as if these uh, cave dwellers have never heard of torrents, file sharing, and the many thousands of streaming sites that festoon the whole World Wide Web. They probably haven't. They <laughs> honestly probably haven't heard of torrents. They tediously march through the words of the law, seizing on terms like perform, and then announce with preposterous gravity that Ario stands in violation of the law. Of course, the decision changes absolutely nothing about the trajectory of history, other than to require that Ario somehow figure out how to pay off the old-time broadcasters, delay the signal, or otherwise assert greater control over what consumers do with its product. We'll get more from Tucker here about the Ario decision here in moments, and you can take control as well on Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. You know Bellawood Flooring for its beauty and durability. And now at Lumber Liquidators, Bellawood Flooring is on sale. Get 10% off every Bellawood pre-finished floor, including solid hardwood, ultra-strand bamboo, and Bellawood mat with a unique oil-finished look. Save big on pre-finished hardwood at just $169 a square foot and Black Forest laminate for only $0.49. Cents. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Over 70 flooring deals and special 12-month financings available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. 
You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenevention.info. Visit Keenevention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want here in the remaining moments. We're talking about Aereo, though, otherwise, which is a... uh, was... And I guess still is. They're still technically in existence. It's just they've shuttered operations for the most part. They've issued refunds to all of their customers for the last month they paid for. Aereo was a company that allowed people to watch broadcast television without having to have an antenna in their home. Because the antenna is in a rack somewhere in Aereo's company servers in various different cities. New York, Boston, major cities was where this was available. But the the signals from those... Uh, from those television stations that Aereo was, was essentially retransmitting only to individual customers who were paying for it uh, were available in counties outside. So, for instance, Derek J., if you tried to actually put up an HDTV antenna, let's say you put it up 100 feet in the air, which would be really expensive and out of the question for most people to do. Even here in Keene, New Hampshire, you're probably not going to get much at all from Boston. That's a long way for a signal to travel. But Aereo would allow you to watch in HD quality with no... F- Buzz, no static, none of that nonsense. So why is it? What's the big difference? Because it goes over the internet instead of uh, going over radio waves or something? Well, right. A signal, radio signals get less and less powerful over uh, over distance, right? Uh-huh. And uh, with new digital technology, the way signals work now on television is you either have enough signal to create a picture or you don't. There's no more static in digital television. Oh yeah. Um, but what there is is you know signal that can fade in and out. That can be a problem. But ultimately, um, you know, the, the way it works is with their, they've got the antenna in the city. 
So the antenna's there in Boston, let's say, you know, or New York or whatever city it is you'd be getting the aerial signals from. The mm -hmm. antenna's there, so there's no issue with signal because it's there in the same market, the same mm -hmm. physical area as those transmitters. Yeah. So this would actually have allowed, aerial would have allowed those broadcasters to have a much larger impact, a much larger audience than they ever had had. But because Aereo, you know, I don't know, they weren't getting the numbers from Aereo. They claimed they couldn't monetize Aereo in the same way. So broadcasters were upset. This is essentially a disruptive technology to the television marketplace, and that's why they f filed lawsuit to put a stop to it. It sounds like a big deal. I mean, they're, ref they're refunding the last month's subscription to their customers. Any idea how many customers they had? About 500,000 customers wow. nationwide. All right. So that's not... That's not small potatoes. No, but I don't think they'd also completed their rollout either. They basically got no. They're sued. brand new. It yeah. sounds like they're a new uh, business, but they started a, up half a million is not not chump change. They made an impact uh, in the press, and then they got sued. So they really haven't. You know, they've been around since 2012, and yeah. ultimately they they got filed a suit right out the gate. Wow. Uh, so more from the story from Liberty.me. This is Jeffrey Tucker talking about how outrageous the court is making the decision against Aereo. Uh, on the favor of old media, the old way, the old guard uh, broadcasters. So, in other words, the Supreme Court is trying to mandate a deliberate degradation of an innovative consumer service. And in this case, it's been shut down at, at this point. Whether they'll come back is another question. Because apparently the case has been remanded to a lower court. What will ultimately come out of that, we still don't know. What's more disgusting about this, which Judge Scalia points out in the dissenting opinion, is that Aereo violated no copyright at all. Consumers may or may not have, and I really don't care either way because watching someone uh, or something one would otherwise not have watched doesn't constitute any kind of theft, stealing, or taking. Programming is an infinite good, not a material good that you can steal via consumption, meaning that it can be copied. Um, there's no limit to the amount of people that can watch television programming. Blaming Aereo for what its consumers do is like penalizing a paper company because I write on it a copyrighted poem or nailing Samsung because I passed on a trade secret via a phone call. That's an interesting analogy. The technology and the company that makes the technology cannot be held liable for how its consumers use it. To claim that it can is actually a tremendously scary prospect. So what's really going on here? The Supreme Court weighed in, or has weighed in, on a fight between two sectors of industry over future market share. It set out to pick one winner and one loser and sided with the incumbent sector that's probably going to die anyway. So really, ultimately, Aereo breathes life into broadcasting, or it would have, because how many people do you know, think hard, that have broadcast television in their home, that have a broadcast receiver, an I antenna, I don't know anyone. I certainly don't know anybody. I have a satellite antenna, which technically is an antenna, but that's not what I'm talking about. I mean like an old school antenna to receive television no. signals. With. I always had that growing up, but now I don't think my folks have it or anyone. So I, They might even dying, be using that Aereo thing. It's a dying technology, and the fact that Aereo existed br br you know, breathed new life into this idea. Whoa, broadcast television still exists? I can get it on my computer? That's cool. And, yeah. and apparently yeah, half a million people thought it was worth paying for. Mm. But now it's been uh, shut down. It's also so weird that – well, who was this? The Supreme Court? I mean these are yes. nine justices. They nine don't have people. degrees in technology. Mm -hmm. They're not engineers. Who do they think they are making these decisions? I mean – who do they call in when they have serious questions about this? Is there some expert that they oh, seek sure the counsel both, of? I'm sure both sides had expert uh, witnesses. Yeah, to expert present. to me sounds like people who've got their pockets lined. That's that's who they're talking to. Scully. Hey, do we get money from you? No? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Not your decision. It's certainly true that old school broadcasters brought more to the table for politicians than did Aereo. Uh, I mean, as, if anybody's lining anyone's pockets, it's definitely the old guard media. Scalia's dissent recalls the case from 1984 in which the Supreme Court came within a hair's breadth of making video cassettes illegal. That's the case with Sony versus Universal Studios. Actually, Scalia is more accurate. He uses the word contraband, suggesting that he and his team understand the law has a limited power to change the way history pans out. Technology takes its own direction regardless of what the Supreme Court says. The Sony case almost went the other way. Can you imagine? How might the government had enforced a ruling that prohibited the manufacture of video recording technology that consumers might misuse? The argument would have been then that, hey— 
Someone could use this videotape to record a broadcast and then play that broadcast back illegally for an audience. We can't allow videotapes. You know, same th- same argument. The fact that this story almost completely missed um, you know, my purview is it makes me wonder how many of these stories have gone by that have limited to the technologies that I could be walking around in a sky oh, yeah. car by now. Well, but the the Supreme Court needs to say, uh, no, you, you can't innovate. No, you can't have that technology. We're going to get in the way of the that. The FCC has been holding back technology for years. I heard rumor that the cell phone technology was available in the 60s, but it didn't get released until Whoa. the 1980s or whatever. I mean, Could they, you they imagine back. how different the world would be if we had It'd cell phones in the 60s? It would have required, as Tucker points out here, to enforce these uh, rules, the total state at least, and certainly would have set back the information age. We're talking about the VHS possible restrictions. Fortunately, we were spared that fate due to a 5-4 decision against the entrenched industrial instru- uh, interests, and all the archives show that it almost went the other way. Back then, the disgusting television industry claimed that all video recording had to be destroyed, or else every manner of disaster would meet the industry, which would in turn harm art, civilization, and the American way of life. They claim the same pile of baloney in the Aereo case, too. As Scalia sensibly writes, quote, we are in no position to judge the validity of those self-interested claims or to foresee the path of future technological development. Remember, Scalia was the dissenting opinion. Exactly, which is why the court never should have heard the case. So why did it? Because the case extends from really bad law, namely copyright law. There's no way to enforce copyright law in a way that doesn't eventually come to interfere with the progress of industrial development, Mm -hmm. since so much of that development is about finding easier ways to discover, distribute, and reproduce information. This case demonstrates the awful truth about copyright. It's a system of monopoly privilege over the expression of ideas that enables government to stop consumer-friendly economic development and reward uncompetitive and legally privileged elites to fleece the public through surreptitious use of coercion. If you took this newest decision seriously, every manner of storage device, recording device, and streaming technology would come under question. This court assures us that it wasn't what it had in mind and that industrial progress is still unharmed, but the dissent is more correct here. For this decision to be applied will involve another decade of wrangling, lawsuits, payoffs, grafting, and mutual recrimination, all of which comes at the expense of consumers. And regardless, nothing changes the fact that television is going to have to adapt itself to the age of the Internet. The Supreme Court, in the end, can't save their bacon. Even with Aereo, they're still advertising, and perhaps more than ever, you just have to get creative. There is a lesson in this idiocy, says Tucker. The court should keep its paws off technology, and the same is true of Congress, the presidency, and the whole state apparatus. Technological development requires freedom from all of these birds of prey. Wow. I don't I don't even know what to think. Uh, th- I'm so upset by the court not even trying to make a false pretense of like oh well we did some investigation we we asked these engineers or these experts. They don't even try to pretend like that. They just n- put out these bold lies like well this hasn't interfered with innovation any. We know that's not true. So why would they lie about that? I mean, do they think they can get away with it? The people don't know the difference. It, and I have to agree with Tucker here. This is a scary decision. I haven't read the court's opinion, obviously, but it sounds like he's at least skimmed it. And if any sort of media can be used for the purpose of violating copyright law, that it can be made illegal, that's crazy. They're saying that's not what this will result in, but we all know that court decisions can be interpreted in different ways by different bureaucrats out there. We'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, check out Derek at DerekJ.me and us online at freetalklive.com. In the meantime, see you tomorrow. All experts agreed this week that the dying U.S. economy is no reason at all to stop investing in print media. Calling the newspaper and magazine industry a veritable cash cow with massive potential for growth, top experts everywhere said that aggressive investment in print media will pay off in spades and that newsprint is in no way threatened by internet news sites or online video content. Besides, everyone in the know agreed, loyal readers of newspapers would never, ever in a million years turn their back on the trusted print media industry that has always been there for them in good times and bad. This is the Onion News Network. It's the Onion Radio News. I'm Doyle Redland. Cardiologists announced today that test subjects who took a single aspirin tablet followed by a fifth of bonded Kentucky bourbon were 85% less likely to realize they were having a heart attack. Potential side effects for the new treatment include slurred speech, impaired vision, and vomiting. Doyle Redland for the Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com.
This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Monday, June 30th, 2014. Here's the news. Radio VR News. President Obama is set to announce his nomination of a former Procter & Gamble CEO to head the embattled Veterans Administration. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. Until he left last year, Bob McDonald was P&G's CEO, running a company whose products are in 98% of American homes. He also was a top cadet at West Point and served in the 82nd Airborne. But the reason the president's choosing him to be veteran secretary is his record managing a globe-straddling enterprise. And there's little doubt the sprawling VA needs some tough managerial love. Already struggling to deal with the Iraq-Afghanistan influx of veterans, the agency's reeling from a scandal in its health care arm over widespread and possibly deadly appointment delays. Mark Smith, Washington. The Supreme Court is set to issue a long-awaited ruling on the final day of its term. Jerry Bodlander reports on the controversy over specific contraceptives involving Obamacare and Hobby Lobby. Two years after the court upheld the constitutionality of the president's health care law, the justices are set to rule on a key aspect of it. At issue is the requirement that birth control be included in the preventive services that are part of employees' health care plans. Hobby Lobby and other companies are challenging the requirement, saying some birth control methods violate their religious beliefs. The justices have never declared that for-profit corporations can hold religious beliefs, The companies claim a 1993 law on religious freedom extends to businesses. Jerry Bodlander, Washington. Diplomats and politicians see an urgency for U.S. action in response to Islamic militants in Iraq. Now, David Malendi reports a new Islamic state has been announced. Former U.S. ambassador to Iraq, James Jeffrey, told CBS it's a dire situation. It's a huge terrorist threat. Also on Face the Nation, Republican Senator John Barrasso called the militants the worst. They are the richest, most powerful, and most savage group of terrorists in the history of mankind. Ambassador Jeffrey says that demands immediate action. The administration needs to step up its act. Also on the show, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin cautioned. There's no appetite for us to get boots on the ground or go back into that country any way, shape, or form. But he does support security opportunities operations to protect the U.S. Embassy and Americans in Iraq. David Melendi, Washington. The Marine Corps says a corporal who was declared a deserter after allegedly faking his own kidnapping in Iraq a decade ago has surrendered to U.S. authorities and is now facing a hearing at Camp Lejeune. Correspondent Jackie Quinn has the details. Ten years ago, Corporal Wasef Ali Hassoun disappeared in Iraq and turned up a month later in his native Lebanon saying he'd been kidnapped. He was sent to Camp Lejeune and was about to face a military hearing in 2004 when he disappeared again during a Christmas visit with relatives. Hassoun, a naturalized American citizen who served as a translator in Iraq, is now in military custody. His brother had said Hassoun was a victim of anti-Muslim bias in the... 